This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Bengals will be kicking off going left to right as we look at Milwaukee County Stadium. The Bengals clad in their white uniforms this afternoon and the Packers in their traditional green. Both clubs face the same situation going into this game. They are one and two. And as Jimmy was mentioning, this is really a crucial game, kind of a crossroads for the Bengals to see if they can find some of that lost offense that came about beginning with opening day against the Cleveland Browns. Archie Griffin has been deactivated because of that broken rib. He and Mike Wells are the inactive players this afternoon. So Lenville Elliott and Booby Clark will be the starting running backs for the Bengals. Tommy Casanova and Wilson Whitley will not start, but both are able to play. So we'll have the defensive alignment in the secondary, the same as it's been the last three weeks. Marvin Cobb will play the strong safety spot, and Mel Morgan will be at three. Walter Johnson will start a defensive tackle for Whitley. Both clubs are out on the field right at the moment, just waiting until it's kickoff time. The officials for the game this afternoon, Fred Wyatt is the referee, Tom Hensley is the umpire, Leo Miles the head linesman, Don Orr is the line judge, Jimmy Ross is the back judge, Fred Swearingen is the field judge. Little Steve Odom is the deep man for the Green Bay Packers as Chris Barr tees it up on the 35. This is the home, of course, of the Milwaukee Brewers. The Bengals on the infield skin portion of the gridiron here at County Stadium. Barr advances on the ball and we're underway. The kick is high and Odom will take it right at the goal line. Comes straight out to the 5 to the 10. Now cuts to his left. Gets a little running room, but is hit and going to be dragged down at the 22-yard line. Catching him from behind was Ray Phillips, the rookie linebacker from Nebraska. Dragged him down from behind at the 22, and that's where the Packers will put the ball in play as we get things underway. You are talking about that skin part of the infield. We were on that skin part of the infield before the game, and it is absolutely like cement. As a matter of fact, Bob Johnson, the Bengals offensive center, walked along, kicked his toe into it, and he said they might as well just pave it. There's going to be some slipping and sliding among the offensive and defensive linemen down there. The Packers come out of the huddle with Lynn Dickey, the quarterback, Barty Smith, and Eric Tarkelson are the running backs. We'll set the remainder of the offensive and the Bengals' defensive lineups for you. Quick pitch and a handoff and a slant and over right tackle to Torkelson. And there isn't much room there as he's hammered down after a gain of perhaps a yard. Jim LeClaire, the middle linebacker, came over to make the stop. The Packers have Ken Payne and Steve Odom as their wide receivers. Rich McGeorge is the tight end. Mark Concar and Dick Himes are the tackles. Steve Knutson and Mel Jackson, the guards. And Larry McCarron is the center. The Bengals across the front on defense have Bacon and Burley at the ends with Johnson and Edwards at the tackles. LeClaire, Harris, Reggie Williams, Riley Parrish, Cobb, and Morgan. Second and nine, a handoff around the left side this time. Sneaking through comes Barty Smith and gets up to the 25-yard line. Before he is pinched in and knocked down by Walter Johnson. So in a couple of plays, the Packers have made about four yards up to the 25, and now they'll be looking at a third down and about six. Just underway, first offensive series here at Milwaukee County Stadium. Both teams have been outscored in their first three games. Both teams have records of one and two. Now the Packers come out with a slot formation right. Back split in behind Dickey. Dickey drops back for his first pass of the afternoon. Looking, throws it up the middle. It's caught at the 35, up to the 40-yard line, into the Bengals 41. Comes Burt Askson, the other tight end who is in the ball game. And he's hammered down at about the 42-yard line. LeClaire dropped back. They threw under that zone again, as San Diego had so much success doing last week. Beneath the linebackers, right straight down the middle. He caught it for 35, got it up to the 41, and the Packers convert the third down situation and have the first down at their own 41. And that is the first pass reception of the year for Askson, and it would have to come right now. Dickey hands off, coming around to the left side, comes Marty Smith, he gets to the 45-46 before he's knocked down. Mel Morgan came up in the free safety, and again, Jim LeClaire has been all over the field on this first series, roamed across from the middle spot, but not until Smith had picked up five to the 46, and it'll be second and five. Packers tried one play at right tackle, and then swung around and run everything to the left since then. So they made five and a play, and at the 46, it'll be second and five. No score, we're just into the first couple of minutes of play here at Milwaukee County Stadium. They split Steve Odom, the mighty might, off to the left. They're tight on the right side, back split behind Dickey. And off Tarkles and cuts in over right tackle, and he is really hit by Reggie Williams, lifted right off his feet and dumped at about the 49-yard line. Torkelson is not a big fellow, 6'2", 194, and 230-pound Reggie Williams hit him around the hips and lifted him up and dumped him right about at midfield. But the play was good for four, and now the Packers will have a third and one. Torkelson's a fourth-year man out of Connecticut, and each of the, in each of the Packers' first three games this year, he has been Green Bay's leading rusher. He has 116 yards, but he's not even averaging three yards a carry. So both lines in tight in a third and one situation, the ball just shy of midfield. 
Glenn Dickey, the former Houston quarterback who came to the Packers last year directing the attack. In the right tackle, trying for the short yardage is Torkelson. I believe he has it. He got over midfield down to about the Packers 48. We'll have to see where he is when they all untangle. Again, Jim LeClaire and plenty of others in on the stop, but he has made the first down. Walter Johnson, one of the last men up. The ball is at the Bengals 48-yard line, and the Packers have their second first down of the afternoon. Packers, as Bill mentioned, have been outscored. They've scored 41 points this year, but all 41 of their points have come in the first half. They have yet to put a single point on the scoreboard in the second half of any ball game. Again, they flank Odom to the left, and they've been lining up rather tight. And off Torkos, wide around the right side, gets flies from here, a flag is down as he reaches the Bengals' 45-yard line. Again, Jim LeClaire over there to cut the legs out from under him, also into the stop. On that side, Bo Harris, the left side linebacker. But the first penalty of the afternoon, and the Packers are retreating to indicate the penalty is against them, and we get the signal from Gary Burley, who indicates the penalty is against the Packers, so he'll walk off some yardage. going to be a 10-yard walk-off. It'll take it back to the Packers' 42-yard line, and we'll get the holding call. The first penalty of the afternoon, a hold against the Packers, moves it back to their 42, and now it'll be first and 20. We ran into one of the Bengals' real super fans here just before the game, Larry Goldsmith from Mansfield, Ohio. Phil, I think we've seen him in Atlanta, we've seen him in Kansas City, we've seen him in Chicago, Detroit, and now in Milwaukee. He and his daughter flew in this morning from Columbus. He gets around, so Bert asks him the tight end to place a Rich McGeorge, a slot left. Odom is the wide man to the left. Packers back at their own 42. In an eye, a pitch to the deep man, and the eye, Charkelson has no place to go. He's hit back at about the 39 and spun around first by Coy Bacon, and then three or four Bengals get there quickly and drop him, and there'll be loss of perhaps two or three yards on the play. Reggie Williams came over from the linebacking spot also to help out. They're going to spot it back at the Packers' 39-yard line, so it is a loss of three, and now it'll become second and 23. Back to throw, spins away from one man, now it's a room to run. Comes up to the 40 and will be knocked down at about the 47. Bacon and Burley pinched him from the outside, and Dickey then moved out the middle, got up to the 45, the 46-yard line before Jim LeClaire nailed him. So Dickey on the run gets about seven, and now the Packers will look at a third down with still about 16 yards to go for the first down. Dickey doesn't run that often in the first three games uh, on plays uh, that he, he was either designed to run or was forced to run. He's carried only twice in the first three games, picking up a total of 16 yards. The Packers have converted both the third down situations that they've had thus far in the game. Now Willard Harrell has gone into the game, replacing Tarkelson. Come out with a slot formation to the right, and Dickey goes back to throw. Fires up the middle, is intercepted by Jim LeClaire, I believe, at about the 35-yard line. It looked as though the pass was intended for him. It was Jim LeClaire who dropped back out of that middle linebacking spot, and Dickey, trying to throw behind him, actually threw the pass short right into LeClaire's arms, and the Bengals will take over at their own 36 where he slipped and then was down. So there's time out on the field. Score, Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. <laughs> in Milwaukee. Bengals have the ball first and ten of their own 36. New England's now taking a 14 to nothing lead over Seattle in the second period. And the Oakland Raiders going for their 17th straight win. Lead the Cleveland Browns 9-3. to three. That's in the second period. Len Valley and Booby Clark, the running backs, in behind Kenny Anderson. Bengals at the 36. Handoff. Clark straight up the middle. Bolts up over the 40. Gets all the way to the 45 and maybe the 46-yard line. Before he can be dragged down by two or three Packers, that trap draw straight up the middle, right up to the 45-yard line. Good for nine. And the Bengals will have a second and one. Mike Curtis and John McDaniel are the wide receivers. I mentioned Clark and Elliott are in the backfield. Kenny Anderson is the quarterback. John Shinners and Glenn Bujnock will alternate at the left guard spot, bringing in the plays. Bob Trumpy is the tight end. Holland and Mays at tackle. Lapham at the other guard. Bob Johnson is the center. 
Second and one, Bengals at their own 45. Curtis Farside, near side McDaniel. The goes in motion toward the line of scrimmage. A pitch out. This one will go for nothing. Breaking through was Mike Butler, the left end, who nailed Glenville Elliott before he had ever had a chance to get out of the box. About a six-yard loss. That pitch out. They were attempting to sweep left. And Mike Butler, the left end, was not blocked at all and nailed him way back at the 39 for a loss of six. That's the wrong man not to block. Mike Butler, a 6'5", 265-pound rookie out of Kansas, has 4'7 speed in the 40. And he was in that backfield almost at the same time Anderson was affecting the pitch out. So slot formation left. With Curtis Wide and Johnny Mack in the slot. Packers in the straight pro defense. Anderson dropped back to throw. Fires a quick out. Incomplete. He threw it to the official. Curtis didn't even turn around. Curtis had not turned around at all. He had gone deep, and there obviously was a mix-up between Curtis and Anderson on that play. Anderson was looking for Curtis to hook and come back, and he went straight downfield. The ball was thrown about 10 yards behind him. So Anderson goes over to talk to Curtis now as they try to get this thing straightened out. So it's incomplete, and Pat McAnally will have to boot for the first time this afternoon. A line of scrimmage is the Bengals' 39. Willard Harrell, along with Johnny Gray, are the twin safeties back for the Packers, standing between their 20 and 30. The wind down on the field is not much of a factor. McAnally's boot. Low driving kick, not particularly good. It'll be taken by Harrell at the 27. It's one block on the far side at the 30. will make it to about the 34 or 5 yard line before he's knocked out of bounds from the far side of the field. A lot of Bengals over there to help push him out of bounds right in front of the Packer bench. There's time out on the field. Score Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. And replacement windows when they already have good windows in the home. Well, maybe some of these new fast customer letters will help you understand why. Dear Mr. Johnson, I wondered about spending money on new fast windows, but my reservations are now gone. My wife thinks they're beautiful and very easy to clean. But the amazing thing is that they keep the thermostat on 65 degrees all winter long, and our furnace only comes on four or five times a day instead of 10 or 15 times in the past. Thank you. Our new fast windows are paying for themselves. While well, a fuel savings are important to you this winter, give Bill Johnson a call at 267-8396. New Sash is the only window with a good housekeeping seal of approval, and New Sash replacement windows are custom-made for a perfect fit. Call Bill Johnson at 267-8396, and let him show you how to save up to 30% or more in heating costs. That 24-hour number again, 267-8396. Always ask for the original New Sash. Updating the scoreboard, New England leading Seattle 14 to nothing, second period, Oakland over Cleveland 9 to 3, second period, and the Jets and Buffalo are now tied 7 7 in the second period. And uh, my, uh, Chet Markall, who kicked those two field goals in the final minute and 14 seconds up here in that preseason game, he's only two more points to become the number six scorer in Packer history. We'd like to stop him from doing that this afternoon. So the Packers start out at their own 34, split autumn wide left. Back split, a handoff wide to the right side goes Barty Smith. Cuts back in, works his way up to about the 39-yard line. With the ball going wide right, Smith cut back in, got to the 39. He was dumped over there by Mel Morgan, who came up from the free safety spot. But not until he picked up about five up to the 39. Now the pack will have a second and five. Green Bay has had offensive line problems. The uh, retirement of both Bruce Van Dyke and Gail Gillingham left a big hole in there. And the Packers have not been able to establish much in the way of a running game to any consistency. They couldn't do it last week against Minnesota, and Dickey muttered the old phrase that you've heard time after time, if you can't run, you can't do anything. Slot formation right. Handoff coming around to the left side now is Torkelson, or Smith. And he gets through up to about the 40 to 44 yard line before Bo Harris along with Walter Johnson can pin him down very close to what is needed for the first down as again he picked up very close to five yards the Packers running those actually what amounts to a beer offense as they start out wide and will cut in over the tackles and two plays on this particular series have been successful for about five yards each Dick Himes is up there to check the measurement Dick Himes of course number 72 an old reliable tenure veteran from Ohio State he's been a starter since 1970 when he replaced Forrest Drake, who's now the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Six are put down, and they are about uh, six inches short of the first down. So the third with just those inches to go for the Packers at their own 44. 49 degrees, and rather breezy here in Milwaukee, but it's not a factor down on the field. The ribbons on the goalposts are not blowing at any great angle. On high punts, they'll catch in the wind, but forward passes down on the field will not be too much affected by this breeze. Odom comes left as the Packers face third and inches up at their own 44. Both lines bunch tightly, only Odom split wide to the left. Barty Smith, Parkles, and the running backs behind Dickey. 
And off and into the right side, getting a first down is Smith. Just went in a straight hand off and a dive. And over the right side, got across the 45 to the 46. Stop there, but the Packers have picked up the first down. They just ran on the right side behind Jackson and Himes. And McCarron in the middle, got the yard, and, and a little more to about two out to the 46 and have another first down. That's the Packers' fourth first down of the afternoon. They had three of them in that first drive, and they've now picked up their fourth of the afternoon. Both teams one and two coming into this game. And both trailing their respective division leaders by one game. Again, Odom split wide to the right this time. On a wide split as Dickey goes back to throw. Pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage. A dive, and it was not intercepted. It's just no good. Diving for the ball and mad about the fact was Jim LeClaire. The pass was batted down at the line of scrimmage. LeClaire dove for it at the 45. It was ruled a trap. And so at the 46-yard line or 45, it'll be second down and 10. Jim LeClaire doesn't normally get that mad. He spiked that ball good, and uh, a little heated argument there with the officials. Well, Harris, the left side linebacker with LeClaire in the middle. Reggie Williams on the right side. Parrish and Riley are the corners. Marvin Cobb is the strong safety, and Mel Morgan is the free. Now Ken Payne goes out wide to the right side, and Odom, who lined up in a slot, now comes over to the near side, and they have the wide men split on both sides. Second and ten at their own 46. On a draw play, a handoff up the middle, a hole is there up the midfield, and down to the Bengals 48 comes little Willard Harrell is in the backfield. Nail back there and stopped by Eddie Edwards, who drifted back from the line of scrimmage. But with the Bengals looking for a pass, the Packers ran a draw and picked up about five yards on to make it six yards to the Bengals 48-yard line, and now it'll be third and four. Dickey has hit one out of three this afternoon thus far, and the Packers have controlled the ball here for the first nine and a half minutes or nine minutes of this ball game. The Bengals have had just one series, ran three plays and had to punt. And the Packers have had it the rest of the time. Third and four at the Bengals 48. Again, Dickey goes straight back to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Now fires down the middle. Was it caught at the 35? It was. Caught by Ken Payne. Doing a slant and Kenny Riley was right there to drag him down immediately. He did a cross. Bill Morgan dragged him down. A cross right out to the Bengals 35-yard line. Payne gathered it in, and the Packers have the first down at the Bengals 35. They brought the ball from their own 34-yard line after returning the punt. They have no score here. Five minutes and 15 seconds left to play in this first quarter. That's the second pass that Dickey has completed both of them on third down situations. The first one to Askson for 16 yards. This one to Payne for 13. And off, running in over right tackle again goes Barty Smith, nothing fancy, just bruising in over right tackle, makes about five as he got it down at the 30-yard line. Parrish knocked out the interference on his side, and he was hammered down by a couple of men at the 30, but not until he picked up five more yards. And the Packers' running game, which has not gone well all year, is going particularly well on this series of plays right here. It'll be second and five. They've been working the tackles in between tackles and ends, and Dickey has thrown the ball rather sparingly. Again, Odom comes wide left, tight right, a pitch off. Harrell running wide to the right, cuts in. Ferris broke up the interference and got under Harrell and knocked him down. After a gain of about a yard, Bo Harris also came over to help out in the stop. Good defensive play by Ferris coming up in that left cornerback spot. Shut that one off with a gain of a yard. At the 29, now it'll be third and four. Clock down to 410 remaining in this first period. We have no score here at Milwaukee County Stadium. At the end of the first half, apparently, it's still Oakland 9, the Cleveland Browns 3. Autumn again comes wide left. Dickey hands off on a draw play to Harrell. Cuts back, gets to the 25 and down to about the 23 and has the first down on the far side of the field. Willard Harrell, getting a good block from Marty Smith, took that in the draw play, and Jim McClare finally knocked him down, but the Packers convert that third and four situation on a six-yard run by little Willard Harrell, only weighs about 182, 5'8", tough to find behind those offensive linemen. And down at the Bengals 23, the Packers have another first down. That's the longest pickup that Harrell's had this year. His longest previous run from scrimmage had been four yards, but he moved at that time from the 29 down to the 23. So Harold Smith and an eye now behind Dickey. Again, Odom split wide left. And handoff to the short man, Barty Smith. And he plunges in over right tackle. Gets inside the 20 to about the 19. And a couple of Bengals slipped off, including Jim LeClaire, along with Bo Harris, missed the tackle back at about the line of scrimmage. And Reggie Williams finally knocked him down after he got just inside the 20. So give him three, and it'll be second and seven. Locked down to 250 remaining in this first period. And the Packers have had the ball, all but three offensive plays, and a boot by the Bengals. So they've completely dominated this first period. 
Packers using the same basic formation, tight on the right side, with Odom split about 12 yards wide to the left. This time the backs are split. And after Willard Harrell, who goes in over right tackle, and he gets nothing. Big Eddie Edwards was right there blocking the way that time. Coy Bacon and a couple of others over to help out. And there was very little gain, if any, perhaps a yard in the play. And now the Packers will have a third down and about seven. Jim Colbreth has replaced Barty Smith now at running back. So they have Harrell and Colbreth. Colbreth, a rookie from Oklahoma, six footer, 210. Scoreboard shows third and six at the 19, but the nose of that football is right on that uh, 20 yard line. This time they split wide men both ways. Askson comes over to the left. Coy Baker, Walter Johnson went across the line of scrimmage, got, got back. Dickey swings it out on the near side of Colbreth. Down to the 20 is it and dropped at the 18. Right a little swing pass out to the left of Colbreth. Reggie Williams came over and Mel Morgan and knocked him down. That'll bring in Chester Markle for an apparent field goal attempt. He got the ball to the 18, made a couple of yards on the play. The Bengals have finally stiffened and stopped. And he'll be kicking the ball off what is just about 10 feet perhaps to the left of second base on the baseball diamond. The ball will be spotted down at the 26-yard line, so it'll be a 36-yard attempt. Marco, of course, beat the Bengals with that 42-yarder with about five seconds to go in the preseason game. The ball is placed down. The kick is up and away, and it is wide right. No good. So Marco has missed from 36 yards out, and the Bengals will take over. There's time out on the field. Score Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. Discount this and discount that. Sales on this and sales on that. Why trek all over town to save a few pennies here and there when you can shop one automotive store with savings on everything in the store? That's right. Corvairs is the place for store-wide savings up to 75% on everything. Corvairs has a full selection of CBs, 23 and 40 channels, at tremendous savings. Corvairs has winterizing products like snow tires, batteries, antifreeze, and jumper cables, all at rock-bottom prices. And Corvairs has a complete line of motor oil, filters, plugs, and tune-up parts. Corvairs has everything you'll need for your car or truck. So truck it over to Corvairs. Corvairs has the best selection, the best prices, and two locations to serve you. Corvairs, 2000 Corvair Avenue, just off Allen Creek Drive, and 3254 Cleveland Avenue, North Columbus. Look for Corvairs Storewide Savings in the Thursday's Dispatch, Saturday's Citizen's Journal, and the Sunday Dispatch. Once you shop Corvairs, you'll be back. This is Jimmy Crum along with Phil Sam back at County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We have a scoreless deadlock here with 59 seconds remaining in the first period. The Cincinnati Bengals and the Green Bay Packers. Kenny Anderson in a quarterback as the Bengals will put the ball in play first and ten at their own 20-yard line. His running back behind him will be number 36, Lendell Elliott, and number 42, Booby Clark. And the fans here at County Stadium, Phil, may wonder uh, if they're really looking at uh, Booby Clark or a reincarnation of one of their all-time favorites, John Brockington. Yeah, just about the same size. Also wore the number 42, but John Brockington has uh, been waived since we were up here the last time. Packer cornerbacks playing about eight yards off that line of scrimmage. Curtis split near side, McDaniel far side, and the back split behind Anderson. The handoff is to Clark, who cuts back over the middle and gets to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. Booby cut inside, right tackle. And then went straight up the middle, and Gary Weaver, the left side linebacker, Finally brought him down. The Packers have Mike Butler and Bob Barber at ends. Dave Roller and Dave Purifoy are the tackles. Jim Carter is the middle linebacker. He's flanked by Gary Weaver and Fred Carr. Willie Buchanan and Mike McCoy are the cornerbacks. Steve Luke, the former Ohio State star, is the strong safety. Johnny Gray is the free safety. The 25, the Bengals made five and look at a second and five. Curtis Farside, McDaniel in motion out toward the line of scrimmage. And off the second man, Elliott coming wide to the right side. A flag is down and he gets just back to the line of scrimmage and that's all. A lot of Packers were over there to meet him. Fred Carr came all the way across from the right side linebacking spot to help out Gary Weaver on that side, and the penalty is going to be called against the Bengals. Preliminary indication is that it's holding, and that'll cost him 10 from the 25 back to the 15. They have just 19 seconds left to play in a scoreless first period. Still haven't marked it off, but... The indication is from everybody, and the Bengals backing up. Now we get the mark off that will carry the ball back to the 15-yard line. The holding call was against Dave Lapham. That's the 20th penalty against the Bengals this year. Of the 19 penalties that have been called prior to today, many of them came at a very, very bad time. The Bengals were second and 15 now. 
at their own 15-yard line. But Daniel split left, Curtis to the near side. Again, the Packer cornerbacks are about 8, 10 yards off that line of scrimmage. Anderson goes back to throw. Fires a swing out to Clark. Gets the block. Comes up to the 20. Cuts up to the 30-yard line and is rolled over there. Steve Luke came up from the strong safety spot to make the tackle. It was that quick slip screen to the left. Clark getting the ball. Waiting for the block coming over. John Shinner is pulling out. Put the block on the cornerback, and then Clark cut straight up the field and got to the 25 for a gain of 10. So we've come to the end now of the first quarter, and at the end of the first quarter, the score, Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. This year, your Chevy dealer has more good news about more new Chevrolets than you've seen in years. The new third-generation Monte Carlo, the new size Chevy Malibu, the new size Malibu wagon, the new four-door Chevy Chevette hatchback, these plus the new Chevrolet Caprice, new Chevy Montas, a new Camaro, even a new silver anniversary Corvette. So come on in, America, and see what's new. Come on in, and see what's You're listening to the voice of the Cincinnati Bengals in Central Ohio, WMNI, where you'll hear the best in country music. We are your good neighbor, WMNI in Columbus. At Jam Fack County Stadium here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we're getting ready for the start of the second quarter between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Green Bay Packers. This game scoreless at this point. This is the second time this year these two ball clubs have met. Some nine weeks ago at the start of preseason, very first game of the year for both teams, the Packers won it 23 to 20 up at Lambeau Field in Green Bay when Chet Marco kicked a pair of 45 yard field goals, two of them in the last minute and 14 seconds to win it. Bengals with Curtis McDaniel split on opposite sides, third and five at their own 25. And a couple of Packers jumped and the flag goes down. Anderson back to throw, swings it out to the far side, it's incomplete, intended for Booby Clark. Pass was a little low. A couple of Packers on the left side, Butler and Roller, came across that line of scrimmage. Now the question is whether they were drawn or whether they just came. The officials are consulting down there. The Packers have had a good pass rush. They've sacked uh, the passer 13 times in these first three games. It is offside against Green Bay. And that'll put the Bengals up very close to a first down, if not enough for the first down. And they got Fran Tarkenden four times last week. So although this defensive line is almost completely rebuilt from last year, they have been able to establish a pretty good pass rush here in the early going. The ball is going to be just inches shy as it's brought out short of the 30-yard line, and the Bengals will have third and inches to go for that first down. Not only did they sack uh, Fran Tarkenden four times last week, but uh, Ezra Johnson, a 6'4", 245 rookie, who plays behind Bob Barber at the defensive right end, blocked a point after touchdown for the second straight game. The uh, Bengals are bringing in a new backfield now with Tony Davis. Checks in along with Pete Johnson. Change of backs here on the third and short yardage situation. Both lines are in tight. The handoff, Pete Johnson, in over the middle. He's got the first down, but not by much. Made perhaps a couple of feet, maybe a yard of the play. But got the ball up over the 30 before he was submarine by the middle of the Packer line. Purifoy, Roller, Carter, all of them in there. Now the Bengals will bring in the regular backs, Clark and Ellie again, after that third and short yardage conversion. So the Bengals pick up a first down up at the 31. No score in the game. We're just into the first minute here of the second quarter. The Packers have run off far more plays than the Bengals have thus far. Hand off. Booby Clark in over the right side, and Clark finds running room up over the 35 to about the 39 before he's nailed in the secondary by the safeties, Johnny Gray and Steve Luke. On the draw, a slight delay and a trap, and he cleaned out the middle. And Clark got good running room up to the 38. Give him seven, make it about eight yards on the play, and the Bengals will have a second and two. Pete Johnson was in for that one play. I don't know if you noticed him on the bus today, Phil. He used to have a goatee, but he shaved it off last night, and it almost didn't look like Pete Johnson. I almost didn't recognize him. Slot formation to the left, with McDaniel in the slot and Curtis wide. And it's Clark in over the right side. Hole opens up to the 45 as he gets about seven more yards on the play before again Carter, the middle linebacker along with Jerry Weaver, the linebacker on the left side can combine to make the stop. 
And the Bengals have picked up on two plays, another quick first down. Both plays in over the right side between Holland and Lapham. And a ball move for about eight again up to the 46 and a quick first down. Booby Clark, of course, had seen very, very little action uh, up until uh, today because of that uh, leg injury. He had carried uh, only twice for a total of four yards before this game. This is the first game he started. He was in just for two running plays last week against San Diego. Anderson play action, back to throw, fires a quick out, is caught down at the 45-yard line by McDaniel, 46-yard line on the far side of the field. Willie Buchanan, the cornerback, was over there covering, but the quick out is going to be good for about seven or eight yards. It'll be spotted at the Packer 46-yard line. Give me, make it second and two. 12 minutes, 44 seconds left to play in this first half. We have no score here at Milwaukee County Stadium. Mark Holt has missed a field goal. The Bengals have not threatened. Get a slot formation right. McDaniel is the flanker in the slot. Curtis Wide right again, the cornerbacks, well off the line of scrimmage. Anderson, a handoff, cutting back into the middle, getting down to the 40 and down to about the 36 goes Lendl Elliott. Sneaking in over that right side again. Again, it was Luke along with Mike McCoy. Gray in the secondary, also in on the stop. And the Bengals have picked up another first down. And Booby Clark getting up rather slowly, holding on to that knee. Now he's up on his feet. Booby flexing that left knee again. Mar Pollins and Doc Kimperman come out to have a look at him, and Tony Davis checks into the Bengal lineup. That carry advanced down to the Packer 37, so it's good for nine again. And the Bengals on this particular series here early in the second quarter have been ripping off yardage at six, seven, eight yards per clip. And a move from their own 20-yard line down to the Green Bay 37, where it's, again, first and ten. No score, 12.05 left first half. Slot formation left. Again, the cornerbacks about eight yards off that line of scrimmage as all teams have played the Bengals in that defensive fashion this year. Anderson hands off to the first man, Tony Davis, and Tony lost his footing, and he's hammered down quickly. Mike Butler from the left end got in to make the stop and had help from Dave Roller, and it's a loss of a couple back to the 39. Tony Davis, as Phil said, lost his footing, was a little slow getting out of the block, but even so, uh, Butler was in there so quickly that even if uh, Tony had uh, gotten a good clean shot out of there, uh, Butler would have probably had a pretty good shot at him. Dave Roller, the fourth-year man from the University of Kentucky, and Mike Butler, the big rookie from Kansas, are the left tackle and left end at the side that handled that play well. Wide men on both sides, Curtis and McDaniel, back split behind Anderson, who drifts off to his left. Now he's going to be corralled and thrown down back at the 50-yard line and right in on top of them. Was no time at all to get rid of that ball. It was Roller, and it's a loss all the way back to the 49-yard line. Roller wasn't held out at all on that play, and it's going to be a loss of 10. And now it'll bring up a third down with about 22 back at the Packers 49. So now they bring in the two extra defensive backs. Two linebackers go out. Weaver and Carter leave. So in a third down situation with about 22 to go, they'll play it with a four lineman, one linebacker, and six defensive backs. Again, those cornerbacks well off the line of scrimmage. Curtis near side, McDaniel far side. The blitz is on, a handoff, coming up the middle, a flag is down, getting just to the 46-yard line for a gain of about three was Elliott. A flag thrown on the play in the Bengals' backfield. Dave Roller hammered him down, and the Bengals are going to be called for holding for the second time this afternoon. Now let's see if the Packers are going to accept the play. It'll bring up a fourth down if they decline the penalty. If they take it, it'll move the ball back to about the Bengals' 41-yard line. Holding against Bob Johnson, the Bengals offensive center, and uh, the Packers are going to decline it. So that'll bring in McAnally to boot for the second time this afternoon. His first one traveled just 33 yards, and McAnally will be aiming this one for the coffin corner. Johnny Gray, along with Willard Harrell, drop back in twin safeties for the Packers. Harrell is always the deep man, and the short man, Gray, will be up about 10 yards, but not directly in front of him. They're spread across the field. Line of scrimmage is the Packer 46. The snap to McAnally. Drills this one down the near side. It'll take him at about the seven-yard line by Harrell. Gets away from one man, but can't get away from another, and he'll be hammered down by Jerry Anderson along with Glenn Cameron down about at the Packers' six-yard line. Not a wise decision at all by Harrell to field that one. So as the teams change possession, there's a timeout on the field. Score remains Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. <laughs> Just won't be belong. All I want is a good time. Let's go to the sea. Far away. 
Again, in the third period, Oakland now leading the Browns 16 to 3. Houston has a quickie in there against the Steelers, leading Pittsburgh 7 to nothing in the first period, and New England has now taken a 21 to nothing lead over Seattle. Here with 10:39 to go, County Stadium, Milwaukee. No score between the Bengals and the Packers. Packers starting out at their own seven. And off is Devardi Smith that tries to go wide left, and Coy Bacon wraps him up and drops him for a loss of a couple back at about the five yard line. Bacon, along with Kenny Rod, the cornerback over on that side. Came in to shut off that wide sweep left completely. Doc Smith down for a loss. So, well, they're going to spot it at the six-yard line. So make it a loss of one, and now it'll become second and 11. No score in this game. 10-15 left to play in the first half. Bengals across the front have Burley Bacon, Johnson, Edwards. LeClaire, Williams, Harris, Riley Parrish, Cobb, and Morgan. Wide split behind Dickey this time. Dickey hands off. Barty Smith in over left tackle. Bulls his way up over the 10-yard line, out to about the 12. Slipped out of the grasp of Eddie Edwards at about the 7-yard line. Moved it all the way out to the 12-yard line before Reggie Williams could finally put him down for good. A gain of 6. Now it'll bring up a 3rd and 5 for the Packers. The ball at their own 12. Just on the edge of what is the dirt part of the infield. Next week, the Bengals have a Monday night engagement over at Three Rivers Stadium against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steve Odom, wide left, the back split behind Dickey. Dickey hands off, coming up the middle, getting to about the 15-yard line, and the way they scrambled, there may have been a fumble in there, and the Bengals are indicating they've recovered. Let's see, it's going to be short by a couple of yards of a first down, but there's been no indication from the officials that the Bengals recovered the ball. The Bengals did a little officiating of their own. And the Packers now will be forced to punt it away as they're looking at a fourth and two. So David Beverly, who has averaged about 44 and a half yards of boot thus far in his young season for the Packers, will kick it away to Willie Shelby. No score, 851 left, first period. Beverly punted seven times last week against Minnesota, averaged 46.4. This will be the Packers' first boot of the afternoon. The snap back to Beverly, a big rush, but he gets it away. A good spiral, and Willie Shelby will gather in at the Packer 49-yard line. Slips, goes to one knee, and is immediately downed right there. The man who got to him, put him down, was Andre Thompson. So again, we have a timeout on the field. Score remains, Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. When you have a family, you Two heads are better than one, especially when the name of the game is comedy. Amos and Andy, Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello, Punch and Judy, perfect partners, good to the last duck on. Business insurance is no laughing matter. That's why you should select a Grange agent to be your partner in protection. Grange commercial custom coverage lets you sleep nights. Let Grange do the worrying. That's what partners are for. Listen, when your Grange agent says, let's be partners. Yeah. Bengals will put the ball in play first and ten at the Green Bay 49-yard line, and one of those defenders in there, Fred Carr, the right side linebacker, 6'5", 240, a 10-year veteran from Texas, El Paso, the number one draft choice in 1968. He is playing this afternoon in his 130th consecutive game for the Green Bay Packers. Carr is just an outstanding athlete. The Packers thought of using him as a tight end when he first came up. The Bengals get good field position on only a 37-yard boot by Beverly. You have wide men split both sides. Kenny Henderson with a long count. Hands the ball off. Booby Clark back in there. Booby through the left side. Gets inside the 45 to perhaps the 44. So Clark is shaken off that minor knee bruise 
The reason that he went out of the ball game for just one short play on that last series. First in through the left side, got it down to 44. Gobbled up a quick five, and it becomes second and five. The Bengals had the ball for just six plays in the first period. And here in the second period, with 8-10 to go, the Packers have had it for just three plays plus the punt. So the Packers dominated the ball in the first quarter. The Bengals thus far here in the second quarter. Anderson hands off, running to the outside, but not getting anywhere as Lenville Elliott. He's wrapped up by Weaver in a fumble, and the Packers have recovered. Elliott trying to run white, was separated from the ball down at about the 42 or 43 yard line. I didn't catch who, but somebody in the Packers recovered. It may have been Gray, and they'll take over. There's time out on the field. Score remains Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. Doing it better is the only way Marathon knows how to do it. And we like doing business with folks who feel the same way. And that's why Marathon does business with the guy that knows as the Marathon Man. You're a Marathon dealer. Because he does feel exactly the same way. Anybody can pop the gas and check the oil. But giving service and treating folks like something special. Well, that takes a whole lot more. And what it takes is a Marathon Man. Get together with your Marathon Man. He aims to do it better, and he will. Marathon Oil Company. We got together to do it better. And we did. <laughs> Johnny Gray was the man who was Johnny on the spot with 7.54 to go here in the second quarter, recovering that fumble by Elliott. And the Packers, when time is back in, will put the ball in play first and ten at their own 43-yard line. We have a scoreless tie here in the second quarter. The Bengals have controlled the ball for most of the second quarter after watching Green Bay control it during the first quarter. It was uh, gray, overcast, very heavy, leaden skies here early this morning. But now just broken white clouds and the sun is peeking through. It's been a defensive battle all the way thus far. No score here. Almost midway through the second period. The Packers take over at their own 43. The handoff comes to Torkelson, trying to right side, cuts in, and gets very little. Or Barty Smith, as he tried to cut in over right tackle. Moved him maybe ahead for a couple of yards to about the 45, and Walter Johnson from the right tackle spot applied to crusher right there. And coming up limping slightly is Eddie Edwards. So a gain of two on the play, and at the 45-yard line, it'll be second and eight. The Packers' win came in the opening day game against the New Orleans Saints. Since then, they've lost 16-10 to to Houston. Last week, 19-7 to to the Minnesota Vikings. Second and five, the Packers at their own 45. Take a handoff. Coming wide to the left side is Torkelson. Burley slows him down, but he gets up to midfield as he cut inside Burley. Gained about five yards before Reggie Williams could come over and knock him down. And he is still down, getting up very slowly as Torkelson, now getting up to his knees. Walking back to the huddle very, very slowly. Picked up five on the play, and right out at midfield, the Packers now will have a third and three. And walking back to the defensive huddle, Gary Burley, number 67, pounding himself on the side of the helmet, hitting one hand into the other. Very upset with himself because he should have had Torkelson back at the 45-yard line. So Torkelson shaken up, and the play has gone out, and Willard Harrell, the second-year man from Pacific, has come in to replace him. Packers with a third and three right at midfield. Harrell goes in motion off to the left side. Dropping back to throw is Dickey. Fires it up. Scott down the 45. Down to the 40 and the 35-yard line and out of bounds. Barty Smith coming out of the backfield. And Williams and Mel Morgan finally nailed him and dragged him down. The Packers have done a lot of throwing to their backs. Smith has been the leading receiver with 10 receptions in these first three games. And he took that pass off in the left flat. Moved it down for 16 yards down to the Bengals, 34. And the Packers have the first down. Guy with a real flashy credentials in pass receiving is Odom. He has only three receptions. But those were good for 151 yards, an average of 50.3 per reception. But remember, included in that was that 95-yard touchdown toss last week against Minnesota. And off coming around the right side, getting nothing this time, and a flag is thrown. Jim Colbert then trying the right side, got absolutely nothing. May lost about a yard in the play as the Bengals on the left side swarmed him. Gary Burley the left end, Jim LeClaire coming from the middle line backing spot, but let's see what the flag is all about. Minnesota has taken a 14 to nothing lead over the Detroit Lions in the first period. Is that 14 to nothing or 140 to nothing? I've got 140, but I would uh, <laughs> think they slipped an extra zero in there in the end. Maybe 40, I doubt it. Penalty going against the Green Bay Packers that has not been walked off yet, but the Packers are retreating. The line of scrimmage was down at the 34. The officials still consulting with each other. 
Going to move it back 10 yards to the 44-yard line. Get a holding call against Green Bay that cost them the 10. So now back at the 44, it'll be first and 20. That, of course, would not be too surprising. Minnesota's leading Detroit 14 to nothing because the Vikings have won 16 of the last 18 games they have played against Detroit. The Lions have to believe they're snake bit against Minnesota. Pittsburgh has come up with a field goal. The Oilers have a 7-3 lead in the first period. Slot formation right with Askson in the slot. Widespread behind Dickey. Dickey goes back to throw. Has time. Now runs out of the pocket. Looks. Fires upfield. It's incomplete. Receiver. Rich McGeorge, the tight end, had it momentarily. And then Bo Harris hit him, wrestled the ball away from it, popped free into the goal as an incomplete pass. The ball will come back to the 44. And now the Packers will look at a second and 20. Dickey's tried seven, has completed four. No score in this game. 6-17 left to play in the first half. The Bengals have not threatened at all. Marco missed a 36-yard field goal. That was as close as Green Bay has come. Send Payne wide to the right. Little Steve Odom comes to the left. In fact, they have a slot formation, a double wing. Dropping back to throw is Dickey. The blitz is on. Goes far downfield, way over the head. That one was thrown on the go pattern, and the receiver, Steve Odom, had done a hook along the sidelines, and so he just threw it about 15 yards over his head. The blitz was on, Bo Harris was coming, but they picked it up and Dickey had time to throw. So it comes back to the 44, and now, in Bengal territory, it becomes third and 20. That stops the clock with six minutes and 12 seconds remaining. Here at County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we're in a scores ball game with 6-12 to go here in the second quarter. The Raiders have added another field goal in the third quarter against the Browns, now have a 19-3 lead. New England over Seattle, 21-0 in the third. Jets and Buffalo, 7-7 at the end of the half. Again, a double wing formation, a slot left. Back to throw is Dickey. Fires it, but it's into the ground. Off in the left flat as three Bengals were right in on top of him. He tried to get it off to Jim Colbreth, a little swing out in the left flat. But he threw the ball at his shoe tops, and Colbreth couldn't reach it. Burley and Bacon were both in on top of Dickey. So the Bengals have stiffened, and will force Dave Beverly here to punt it away. Beverly's first boot was just 37 yards. That was from deep in his own territory, and Willie Shelby now is backed up to about the 10. Strictly a defensive struggle all the way. No score, 6.07 left first half. Bengals with 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. There's a snap back to Beverly. Gets the punt away. A good high spiral, and he ran into Beverly, and a flag is thrown. The ball went into the end zone. It was Mel Morgan who ran into Beverly, and that will cost the Bengals five yards, a mighty critical penalty, and will give the Packers the first down. Mel Morgan couldn't stop after trying to block that punt, ran into Beverly, and the ball will be walked off down to the 39-yard line. Putting it down at the 34. And that is a mistake. They'll have to go get it and bring it back to the 39. There they do as they consult with each other and find the ways of their error. So at the 39-yard line, the Bengals, by virtue of that penalty, give the Packers a very, very big first down. Once again, that penalty bug is uh, cropping up and raising its ugly head, and that's what's been hurting the Bengals through these first three games, and has hurt them again here this afternoon. So wide right, a quick pitch. Harold around the left side. There won't be much room, but he gets away from a couple of men, and finally Bacon runs him out of bounds as a couple of Bengals missed tackles. Mel Morgan missed a shot at him coming up from the free safety. He's finally run out of bounds by Bacon, the end on that side, who drifted out with the play and finally knocked him down at the 34-yard line, ran him out of bounds after a gain of five. Second and five, pack at the Bengals, 34. Now Harold goes out of the lineup. Torkelson comes back in, so Smith and Torkelson become the running backs again. Odom wide left, they're tied on the right side. The Packers have used this formation most of the afternoon. Barty Smith straight up the middle, crunches his way down to the 30s. The flaw went wide right, he cut in behind it, moved it down very close to the 30-yard line and very close to what's needed for the first down. Reggie Williams finally dropped him right at the 30. So it's a gain of four and it'll become third and one. Clock running down to five and a half minutes left in the first half and there's no score in this game in Milwaukee County Stadium. Again, Odom goes wide left. Bengals bunch the defense in tight. Dickey with a long count. Gives it to the second man through Torkelson. He dives over the heap, but a flag is down as he made the first down, down to about the 26-yard line. 
preliminary indication is that it is against Green Bay. Holding against the Packers. Well, there's a critical penalty called against the Packers, just as the Bengals suffered one. They had, had a first down, down in the vicinity of the 26 or 27, only to lose 10, which will bring it back to the 40. We'll now make it third and 11. Couldn't catch the number. 88, Bert Askson, the man who was called for holding. And Askson goes out of the ball game now, along with Torkelson. So third and 11 for the Packers now at the 40. They go up Payne wide and Odom in the slot to the left. Smith and Torkelson in behind Dickey. The Bengals have intercepted Dickey once. LeClaire picked one off. Flag is down. Bacon was offside. As Dickey drops it out, McGeorge catches it at the 40. Reggie Williams will run him down, throw him out of bounds at the 35. Mel Morgan hit him, but just bounced right off him back at the 40. But Bacon came across the line of scrimmage too quickly. So the Packers undoubtedly will take the penalty. They made about four yards on the play, but of course it would bring up a fourth down. So they'll walk off the five, and the Packers at the 35-yard line will revert back to a third down situation, but now they'll have six yards to go for the first down. No score, and we're down to 5.05 left in this first period. No change on any of the other scores as we gave them to you. We have nothing in Washington and Tampa Bay, and nothing on Philadelphia and the New York Giants. Maybe in Milwaukee, they don't like those teams. Boycott them. Their names are on the board, but so far no scores, and those were both 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time games. Randy Vataha has checked in at a wide receiver, replacing Payne. He comes out wide right, and in the slot goes Odom. Packers third and six at the Bengals 35. Going in motion, the far side of the field now is Odom, and Dickey drops back to throw. Looks, now he's going to be forced to run. The ball is tied loose, and the scramble at the 40-yard line. Somebody got hold of his arm. I believe that it was uh, either Burley or Reggie Williams. Knocked the ball out of his hand. But apparently, he recovered it himself right at the 40-yard line. The last man up off the ball is Dickey. And right at the 40. The Packers now will look at a fourth down and about 10. But there's a penalty going to be levied against the Cincinnati Bengals. That flag was thrown downfield, and I didn't see it. The five-yard walk-off down to the 30-yard line. Let's see what the call is going to be. The illegal use of the hands against the Bengals, and that will be an automatic first down. This shades of the drive in the closing two minutes of the first half last week right. against San Diego. That is an automatic first down. So the Packers retain control of the ball for the second time. Jermell Morgan ran into the punter. That gave him a first down. Now they hold it here on the illegal use of hands. Odom split wide to the right. Hand off to Barty Smith. Circles out wide to the left. Cuts in and is lifted right off his feet and dropped at about the 29-yard line. Very short gain, maybe a yard on the play. Reggie Williams, the right side linebacker, just picked him up right at the 30-yard line, so there's no gain at all on the play, and out becomes second and 10. Clock running. We're down to 439 left here in a scoreless first half. Just been a long time since we've played a half that's gone this long without any score by anyone. Another change now in that New England Seattle. Uh, New England's added a field goal now. And it's uh, 24 to nothing. New England over Seattle in the third quarter. Of course, as everyone knows, John Hanna and Leon Gray came back to the Patriots. Pop will be not playing today. Dickey goes back to throw. Has time. Fires it down the middle. Right there is with George, and he's going to be wrestled down at about the 18 by Jim LeClaire. They found the opening to the tight end, Rich McGeorge, straight down the middle, and there was plenty of room down there. And the Packers pick up 12 and have a first down down at the 18. The Bengals once again find themselves in trouble, as Phil alluded to just a moment ago, just as they did in the final two minutes of that first half last week at San Diego. And they have nobody to blame but themselves right now for the trouble they're in. Those penalties have come back to haunt them. They have all season long. They've done it again this afternoon. So the Packers at the 18, send Odom out about 12 yards wide to the right. Smith and Torkelson in behind Dickey, offset left. Longer count this time by Dickey, gives it off wide around the left side, goes Smith, and he's upended at the 15-yard line, Kenny Riley and Mel Morgan. They're trying to sweep that left side to the Bengals' right. They get the ball down to the 16-yard line, so give them a couple on the play, and now it becomes second and eight. And the Bengals, after controlling the ball in the first few minutes of this first or second period, have just been unable to get their hands out of now. The Packers started out getting the ball at their own 43-yard line and have had it a long, long time after they recovered that fumble by Lendell Elliott. So we've got a timeout on the field now. Score remains Bengals nothing, Packers nothing. Imagine this. 
You are standing in front of a house built from only new sash windows and one new sash door. Now, let's go inside and experience new sash quiet. The new sash quiet came from the perfect custom fit and the exclusive Thurman pane with its half-inch deader space, reducing outside noise, is only part of the new sash story. Eliminating the draft, the freezing winter wind, or the boiling summer air, the outside stays out because of the perfect new sash fit. For you, this means lower fuel bills, up to 30% lower. It makes dollars and cents to replace your worn-out windows and replace them with new sash, the original replacement window. For more information, call new sash collect. 614-267-8396. That's 267-8396. Your new sash windows also tilled in for easy cleaning and for enjoying the fresh spring and fall air. <sighs> Three minutes and nine seconds remaining here in the first half at County Stadium, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Very, very defensive-minded. The Packers, very defensive-minded. The Bengals, right now, the Packers are threatening. They have a second down and eight at the 16-yard line, deepest penetration they have made. But up until this point, it has been strictly a defensive ball game, and the Bengals' own penalties have hurt them in this drive. Miami has a 20-10 lead over Baltimore in a second period. So Don Shula with a complete rebuilding program down there in Miami. And they've won three straight. Slot formation right, wide split behind Dickey. The Packers down at the Bengals 16. Hand off and a draw play, coming wide to the right and getting just maybe a yard or so. Cutting back in was little Willard Harrell, and Eddie Edwards had sniffed that play out, diagnosed it pretty well, and dropped him at the 14. So it's a gain of two more, and now it becomes third and six. The Bengals have not come close to scoring. Marco missed a 36-yard field goal for Green Bay. Ken Payne, one of the wide receivers, goes out now, and Randy Bataha, little ex-mite of the New England Patriots, replaces him. He goes wide left. On the near side is Odom, a wide split. Fake play, action back to throw is Dickey. Looks, fires down into the end zone. Was it caught? Touchdown. There was a question whether he was inbounds. But it was caught down in the end zone by Barty Smith, who came out of the backfield, went straight down the middle, and Reggie Williams, just throwing his hands up in despair, caught it right near the end line, going straight down the field. So the Packers have scored on the pass from Dickey to Smith, 14 yards, and take a 6 to nothing lead. So Mark Hull will attempt to add the extra point. Comes with 2.31 left to play in the first half. After the Packers recovered, Elliott fumbled at the 43 and a move down the score. The lines are down, the ball is placed, the kick is up in the air, and it is good. So we have 2.31 left to play in this first half, and Green Bay has drawn a 7 0 lead. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network. This is the voice of the Cincinnati Bengals in Central Ohio, WMNI where you'll hear Don Bowman counting down the biggest country hits on American Country Countdown after today's game on WMNI, Columbus. The pass to Bernie Smith covering the last 14 yards, and so the Packers moved 57 yards in 17 plays, aided immeasurably by three very costly Cincinnati penalties. Of course, there were two penalties against Green Bay on that same drive, but the ones, the three against Cincinnati, I think, hurt Cincinnati more than the two against Green Bay hurt them. So with 2.31 to go, the Packers break the scoring ice and take a 7 to nothing lead. And as the Bengals have found out in two of their first three games, they now have their backs against the walls and they have their work cut out for them. And it's time to play catch-up football, and that's no fun. Willie Shelby is the deep man, Jerry Anderson and Tony Davis flank him. And for the second time this afternoon, Marco gets set to kick off. There's the boot. It'll carry down to about the five where Shelby will gather it in. Comes straight up to the 15, to the 20, and all to the 30. Breaks away to the outside, 35, 40 yard line, still on his feet, all the way to midfield and down to the Packer 48. So Willie Shelby runs that one back about 49 yards into Packer territory, but a flag is down on the play. Nate Simpson finally dropped him from behind. And the Bengals are retreating, so the Bengals are going to get a clip call against them. And the flag was dropped at the Bengals 44, so if that was the spot of the infraction, it'll take it all the way back to the 29-yard line. <laughs> another one. Yep, there's another one. Is right. That's the official. Takes the ball back. Fred Wyatt, the referee, puts the ball down at the 29, signals a clip, 
And that's where the Bengals will put it in play. First and ten of their own 29-yard line. Clock is stopped. Two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first half. And the Packers lead it 7 to nothing. So the Bengals, instead of being at the Packers 48, find themselves back at their own 29. Curtis split left. Now going in motion is Bob Trumpy out to the right side, and Anderson drops straight back to throw. Looks, fires up the middle, a dive and a catch at the 42-yard line, getting up again, running with the ball, and dropped down at about the 40-yard line. You caught that ball. I believe it may have been Elliott coming out of the backfield. That was Billy Brooks, number 82, who grabbed that pass in at the wide receiving spot. That was the play the Bengals have not used frequently. They put Trumpy in motion outside, and then Brooks comes across the middle. So we're down at the two-minute warning. And there's time out on the field with the score, Packers 7, Bengals nothing. This year, your Chevy dealer has more good news about more new Chevrolets than you've seen in years. The new third-generation Monte Carlo, the new size Chevy Malibu, the new size Malibu wagon, the new four-door Chevy Chevette hatchback. These plus the new Chevrolet Caprice, new Chevy Monzas, a new Camaro, even a new silver anniversary Corvette. So come on in, America, and see what's new. It's almost a repeat last week, except the game earlier. The Bengals trail the Green Bay Packers 7 to nothing with two minutes to go here in the first half. Cincinnati is 60 yards away from Green Bay territory from the end zone. And right now, it would be a good time for Kenny Anderson to do what that Southern Cal quarterback did against Alabama twice in the last five minutes yesterday. Just move that ball club right down the field and get him in for that seven points and tie the thing up here at the end of the first half. Anderson, so far, has completed only three out of four passes for 34 yards. Well, teams spend a lot of time on the two-minute drill, and the Bengals have an opportunity to put it into motion right here. Bill Brooks goes wide right. Curtis comes to the near side. The back's in an eye behind Anderson. Play action, Anderson back to throw. Fires up the middle, is caught by Trumpy at the Packer 45, and he gets all the way down to the 35-yard line. So Bob Trumpy, one of those infrequent receptions this year, that is only the second pass that Trumpy has caught in four games, and he gets it down to the Packers 36-yard line. So the Bengals going without a huddle, putting the plays in by twos. The clock is running, it's down to a minute 38. In Brooks' far side, Curtis near side. Anderson goes back to throw. Looking, fires up, incomplete. The pass is too low down at the 25-yard line. The roller gave Anderson a pretty good belt just after he got that pass away. Trumpy again was the intended target. A pretty good rush, and Anderson came up short in the pass. So that stops the clock with a minute 30 left. And at the Packers' 36-yard line, the Bengals now have a second and 10. That Miami-Baltimore game going on today in Baltimore, that's, of course, the battle for the AFC Eastern Division lead. Miami and Baltimore both 3-0. and And in the second period, uh, the Dolphins lead Baltimore 20-10. to Curtis goes far side. Again, the cornerback's about eight yards off that line of scrimmage. Anderson back to throw. Fires it up. It's caught the 30-yard line. Still on his feet. Brooks dropped it about the 29. So Brooks taking that ball, slanting in toward the middle. Coming across, got the ball just down to the 30. And now it becomes third down with about four to go. The Bengals go without benefit of huddle. Packer player roller slow getting over there. It stopped the clock momentarily with 114. And now they're going to change footballs. Bengals at the Packers, 30 yard line with a third and four. That was a signal for the clock to start, and it does. Wide men on both sides. Back to throw. A little swing out to Elliott. At the 30 yard line, he's down to the 25 and gets the first down to about the 23 yard line. Glenn Bouznock and Purifoy get into a little shoving match down there. Purifoy taking exception to what he thought was a late block by Bouznock, but nothing is broken up quickly. Now, with a minute left to go, there's a timeout called in the field. Score, Packers 7, Bengals nothing. Discount this and discount that. Sales on this and sales on that. Why trek all over town to save a few pennies here and there when you can shop one automotive store with savings on everything in the store? That's right. Corvairs is the place for store-wide savings up to 75% on everything. 
Corvairs has a full selection of CBs, 23 and 40 channels, at tremendous savings. Corvairs has winterizing products like snow tires, batteries, antifreeze, and jumper cables, all at rock-bottom prices. And Corvairs has a complete line of motor oil, filters, plugs, and tune-up parts. Corvairs has everything you'll need for your car or truck. So truck it over to Corvairs. Corvairs has the best selection, the best prices, and two locations to serve you. Corvairs, 2000 Corvair Avenue, just off Allen Creek Drive, and 3254 Cleveland Avenue, North Columbus. Look for Corvairs Storewide Savings in the Thursday's Dispatch, Saturday's Citizen's Journal, and the Sunday Dispatch. Once you shop Corvairs, you'll be back. Bengals are in much better shape now than they were a minute and 19 seconds ago. It's first and 10 at the 23. One minute remaining in the first half. Anderson back to throw. Gives it on a slow draw to Clark. Up the middle to the 20. Gets to the 18-yard line. That's that slow draw where he hands it around with Clark just standing in front of him looking downfield. And Anderson turns around and hands the ball to him forward. Clark got it down to the 18 for a gain of five. Second and five. Bengals go without a huddle. Clock down to 40. Anderson goes back to throw. Looking. Swings it up to Elliott. Down the middle to the 15. Lendl to the 10 and gets all the way down to the five-yard line. Little dunk pass. Now the Bengals will call a timeout to stop the clock with 33 seconds left as Kenny Anderson walks over to the sideline to consult with the Bengal coaches. Elliott taking that little pass right over the line short. Cut inside at the 15, was hit about at the 9, and dragged a couple of tacklers, including Freddie Carr, down to the 5-yard line. And the Bengals now have 33 seconds and one timeout remaining and have a first and goal. 33 seconds remaining, as Phil said, and for the first time, and let's figure it up, four quarters last week, uh, one quarter this afternoon, that's five quarters, five quarters in about uh, 13 minutes, the Bengals are finally beginning to look like the Cincinnati Bengals. For five quarters in 13 minutes, they look like uh, the Sisters of the Poor, really, against San Diego last week and so far this afternoon against the Green Bay Packers, but they have come on here in the last two minutes and 19 seconds, starting back at the 29-yard line, and one, two, three, four, five passes in this drive that has taken him down to the five-yard line, and the Bengals are now beginning to act like the Bengals of old. So timeout is called with those 33 seconds left. Kenny Anderson talking to the offensive coaches, Bill Johnson and Mike McCormick, on the far side of the field. Right in the booth next to us, Howard Brinker, the defensive linebacker coach, and Jack Donaldson and Boyd Dollar, the offensive coaches, and Charlie Winter, Mike McCormick, Chuck Studley, and Bill Johnson down on the field. Anderson is checked, returns to the huddle. Bengals have a first and goal at the Packer five. But down here, of course, you'll get the man-to-man -man coverage. Wind up with a slot formation to the right. Packers come right up to the line of scrimmage. Right down in the dirt, near third base. Anderson with the ball, goes back to throw. Looks downfield, can't find anybody. Now he's going to run out of bounds. He'll be forced out at about the nine. Couldn't find anybody in the open as Anderson drifted out to the right. And there will be a loss on the play back to the 8-yard line they're going to spot it. So it becomes second and goal at that point. The clock stopped. The play took just five seconds. 28 remain. Tony Davis now checks into the Bengal backfield. Booby Clark goes out. Packers lead at 7-0. Right down to the final 28 seconds here in the first half. Bill Brooks, who has replaced John McDaniel at the flanker, goes wide right. And Curtis comes to the left. Eichel draw double coverage over there from Mike McCoy, who's right up on the line of scrimmage. Anderson back to throw. The blitz is on. It's picked up. Fired down in the corner. Intended for Curtis. Incomplete. Covered down there. McCoy had him as Curtis went down and worked his way to the left toward that sideline. The blitz was on. Jim Carter or Fred Carr was coming, but it's picked up by Tony Davis and Anderson had time to throw the ball. So now at the eight-yard line, it becomes third and goal. Clock has stopped. 23 seconds remain. That took another five. Now John Schinners goes out and Glenn Bujnock brings in the play. And if the Bengals don't make it here, they'll have to settle for a field goal here in these final few seconds of the first half. Packers lead at 7-0. Elliott and Davis are the running backs. Bill Brooks goes wide to the right. Remainder of the line is tight. Now Brooks comes in motion over the near side. Anderson goes straight back to throw. Looks, fires down, touchdown. Curtis right down the middle. Got away from Mike McCoy and took that pass right under the uprights. And the Bengals have put six points up on the board and have scored for the first time since the win over Seattle in the second game of the year. And now Chris Barr will attempt the extra point to could tie this game up with. The Bengals took the ball and moved all the way from back at their own 29-yard line. So Marvin Cobb will hold it, put it down in the dirt. Chris Barr will attempt the extra point. Ball is placed down. Barr's kick is up in the air, and it is good. So that ties it up now with 19 seconds left to go in this first half. 
And the Packers will have one more opportunity in these final few seconds. So the Bengals move it down the field and score on the eight-yard pass from Anderson to Curtis. Anderson's second touchdown pass of the year. Both have come to Isaac Curtis. And the Bengals have tied this game up at 7-7. Bengals moved 71 yards in 10 plays. Kenny Anderson's passing stats now read a little bit better. He's completed 8 out of 11 for 89 yards and one touchdown. Isaac Curtis has just one reception this afternoon. That was for 9 yards. That was the one that just came up and put the 7 points, the 6 points, and then the extra point on the board for the Cincinnati Bengals. So with 19 seconds to go, we have a new ball game. It's tied 7-7. Capacity crowd of more than 55,000 this afternoon here at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Pittsburgh has come up with a touchdown in the second quarter and has now taken a 10-7 lead over the Oilers in the second period. The Jets lead Buffalo 17-7. No other changes still as we gave them to you the last time. So Steve Odom, back to receive, and the ball fell over just as Barr ran up on it. And the Bengals kind of hesitatingly go back to recover the ball. Everybody <laughs> went downfield, but just as Barr got there, the ball fell over. Oh, they're going to give the ball to the Green Bay Packers at the 35-yard line. With 19 seconds left to play. And all the Bengals are questioning the call. I've never seen that happen. Why the Packers got the ball, I do not know. I've never seen the play before. one that perhaps the officials have not seen either because they've gotten together down there to uh, talk it over and now they've decided otherwise that it is not Green Bay's ball. So we're going to kick it off over again. That's better. Apparently something, as Phil said, it's something we've never seen in 10 years of broadcasting the Bengals game. If Barr had kicked the ball or even touched right. it, of course, then it could have been, it was a free ball and the Packers could have recovered it. But Tony Davis went back and I thought he covered the ball, but Barr never made contact with the ball. The ball fell over as he was just about a step away from putting his foot into it. So he'll tee it up again at the 35-yard line. We'll do it all over again. No time ran off the clock. The clock does not start in the final two minutes of either half until it's touched by a player in the field of play. So the clock will not start until Odom touches the ball. Now Barr advances, and there's the boot. It's a line drive that bounces down to 30, 25. It's dropped by Odom at the 10, and he finally picks it up. Comes straight up, gets to the 20, is going to run into a flock of tacklers, reverses his field, comes back the other way, running laterally at the 15. Now he's going to try the other way, and he almost lost the ball. It popped up in his hands, but he grabbed it as he's knocked down at the 11-yard line. He reversed his field twice, tried to pick up a block, but the Bengals, with good contain, did not all sweep to the right side of the field when he went that way. And when he came back to the near side, two or three men were there to meet him, and Willie Shelby finally dumped him back at about the 12. And with seven seconds left, the Packers will have about time to run off one play. So 7-7 seven, seven games, 7 left to play here in the first half. The Bengals just scoring a few seconds ago on the 8-yard pass from Anderson to Curtis. Dickie to Smith from 14 yards out accounted for the Green Bay touchdown. So Odom comes wide right now and the backs go into an eye with Barty Smith, the short man. Tarkles in the deep man. The Packers at their own 11. They'll probably just run it into the line and let time run out. It is Barty Smith over the right side. And he's met hard right at the line of scrimmage. And time will run out here in the first half, and that'll be it. So Jimmy Crum will be along with his analysis of the first half in a moment. Once again, our score at halftime here at Milwaukee County Stadium is the Bengals 7 and the Packers 7. The Packers will kick off. The Bengals had the ball for just six running plays, as I mentioned, in that first period, and had it 19 times from scrimmage on only what amounted to two offensive series because they lost the ball on Elliott's fumble and the Packers picked it up and went 57 yards to score and then the Bengals came back with just two minutes and 19 seconds left and moved 71 yards to knot it up on the eight-yard touchdown pass from Anderson to Curtis. So the Packers kicking off, going right to left. Willie Shelby is the deep man, Tony Davis and Jerry Anderson the short man. There's Mark Cole's kick. Will not be particularly long. It'll be taken by Shelby in a trot at the 10. Up to the 20, runs into a horde of Packer tacklers, and will be knocked down at about the 24-yard line. There was a fumble in there, but it was after he had hit the ground and the ball had been blown dead. And the Bengals will have the ball at about their own 24-yard line to start out here in this third period. Sun is out now, and the skies have fairly well cleared here in Milwaukee. Overcast about an hour before the game, but then patches of blue begin to show. We played most of that first half on the sunshine. Bengals come out with a slot formation right. Billy Brooks is the flanker. He's in the slot. Curtis wide right. 
Hand off around the left side. Cutting in is Elliott, and he runs into about three or four Packer tacklers as he gets out of the 29-yard line. Jim Carter, the middle linebacker. The fellow's had all kinds of problems with a couple of broken arms in his career. Mike McCoy up from the cornerback spot also to help out on the tackle, but they say that Elliott got to the 30. So it's a gain of about five, and it'll be second and five. 7-7 seven, seven ball game here in the opening minute of this third period of play. Tight on the right side, and Ike Curtis. On the right side, Billy Brooks split to the left. And off, it's Booby Clark in our left tackle, coming wide, and Booby runs over a tackler and gets to about the 33-yard line. Booby just put his head down and ran right into Willie Buchanan. Buchanan wrapped him up and finally dropped him after Clark had struggled forward for a couple of more yards out to the 33. So give him three, and it'll bring up a third and two. You mentioned those broken bones. Middle linebacker Jim Carter, the eight-year veteran of Minnesota, is the real hard luck guy as far as the Packers are concerned. He was a, a number three draft choice in 70. He broke his leg in 75 and his arm in 76. Now Pete Johnson and Tony Davis go in the Bengals' backfield on the short yardage situation. Packers have six men right up tight at the line of scrimmage. And off Clark, both in the side, gets to the 35 and has the first down. Coming in over right tackle, and he made that with a good deal of that second effort after he'd been hit by Jim Carter. He struggled forward and just got the nose of the football to the 35 and made it with a couple of, or Tony Davis, made it with a couple of inches to spare. Check that, make it Tony Davis. So it's first down for the Bengals at the 35. 7-7, seven, seven, we've played a couple of minutes here in the third period. Bengals at their own 35-yard line. Again, come out with a slot formation right. Curtis wide, and as the Packer cornerbacks have done all afternoon, they're about eight yards off that line of scrimmage. An eye formation, short man, it goes to second man, Elliott wiggles his way up to the 40 and gets up to the 42 as he came in that right side. Again, the middle linebacker, Jim Carter, along with Dave Purifoy, who made the stop, but not until... Elliott had picked up about seven yards at the 42, and now the Bengals will look at a second and three. And the Bengals have shown more offense here in this opening series in the third quarter than they showed in the entire first half with the exception of that drive in the final two minutes and 19 seconds. As they break the huddle, Curtis again rather tight on the left side. Brooks split out about eight yards wide to the right. The back split behind Anderson. The handoff goes to Clark, who works his way up the middle, and Booby plunges up to the 49-yard line for about another seven-yard crack before Purifoy can wrap him up and drag him down just short of midfield at the 49. So Clark and Elliott eating up yardage here in chunks of sixes and sevens as we open his third period. The Bengals have another first down. They'll move it back a yard to the 48. Booby had a very respectable average that first half, carried six times for 39 yards. That figures out to six and a half yards per carry. Now John McDaniel has replaced Brooks as the flanker. He split out to the right. Hand off into the line and finding the going hard this time was Lindell Elliott as he tried the left side and over between Rufus Mays and the guard on that side. And Purifoy and Barber stopped the play. But he got a couple of yards, got the ball right out to midfield. A gain of two, now second and eight. In case you joined us late, Archie Griffin, the two-time Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State, he is not even with the Bengals this afternoon. He remained in Cincinnati when it was discovered at midweek that he had suffered a cracked rib in last week's game against San Diego. Ike Curtis right, Billy Brooks off to the left. The Packers come across the line of scrimmage. Flags are down, and Anderson will be wrapped up and thrown down by Jim Carter. Not thrown down, just wrapped up and thrown back. The play had been blown dead, and Vern Holland didn't like the way that Carter... Treated Anderson and let the officials know about it. Now well, we've got a change in that score up on the board now. Now it shows Baltimore leading Miami 17 to 14. So a correction of what we had, the 20 to 10 score with Miami leading before. So it'll cost the Green Bay Packers five yards. They were offside. It'll move it down to the 45, and now the Bengals look at a second down situation with just three yards to go for the first down. I wonder where that other score came from. That was up there for an awful long time. Sure was. No changes in the others, just there isn't one. New England now leading Seattle 31 to nothing. Perhaps we did give you that one before. Bengals with a second and three at the Packer 45. Wide men split on both sides of the field. The backs are split. Anderson hands off. Clark, in the middle of the line, reverses himself, goes to the left, and gets about three yards, and they're hard earned. He tried it straight up the middle, then veered off to his left. It was dragged down by Roller and Carter. And now with another third down and about a yard situation coming up. Elliott and Clark go out. 
and Tony Davis and Pete Johnson, the short yardage men, come in. The ball is at the Packer 43 and it's third and one. 7-7, 10-25, the time remaining here in the third quarter. First series of the second half. Both lines bunch tight. And up Pete Johnson, he's got a big hole and he's got the first down inside the 40 down to about the 37-yard line. Johnny Gray came up to hit him, but Pete Johnson just kind of ran right over him and dragged him for another couple yards down to the 37, and the Bengals keep the drive alive with a romp of about six yards. Good blocking right in the middle of the line, pried apart that Packer defensive front four. Pete Johnson, of course, one of those big, long uh, line of uh, strong fullbacks from Ohio State, and the Buckeyes may have discovered another one yesterday in freshman Joel Payton, who had four touchdowns against Purdue. First and ten, the ball at the Packer 37. Wide men split on both sides of the field. Anderson goes back to throw. The blitz is on. Finds the man alone. Trumpy. Down at the 30. Spins away. Oh. Gets down to the 25 to the 20. And it'll be knocked out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Just spun away from a Packer tackler, but a flag is thrown down at the line of scrimmage. Oh. And it's going to be a holding call against the Bengals. And Trumpy is shaken up where he was knocked out of bounds. Coming up to his feet rather slowly, and that one will be wiped out. The blitz was on, and Anderson found Trumpy out on the right flat. And the time is being called, and the officials are signaling, but the Bengals don't notice it, that they need somebody from the far side of the field to come over and attend to Bob Trumpy. And finally, Dr. Timperman comes all the way from across the field to take a look at him. I think Trumpy had the wind knocked out of him. That was a great move by Bob Trumpy at about the 25 to 30 yard line. There's time out on the field. Score Bengals 7, Packers 7. Discount this and discount that. Sales on this and sales on that. Why trek all over town to save a few pennies here and there when you can shop one automotive store with savings on everything in the store? That's right. Corvairs is the place for store-wide savings up to 75% on everything. Corvairs has a full selection of CDs, 23 and 40 channels, and tremendous savings. Corvairs has winterizing products like snow tires, batteries, antifreeze, and jumper cables, all at rock bottom prices. And Corvairs has a complete line of motor oil, filters, plugs, and tune-up parts. Corvairs has everything you'll need for your car or truck. So truck it over to Corvairs. Corvairs has the best selection, the best prices, and two locations to serve you. Corvairs, 2000 Corvair Avenue, just off Allen Creek Drive, and 3254 Cleveland Avenue, North Columbus. Look for Corvairs Storewide Savings in the Thursday Dispatch, Saturday's Citizens Journal, and the Sunday Dispatch. Once you shop Corvairs, you'll be back. Bob Trumpy just crossing the far sideline, going back to the Cincinnati bench. It was either something with his shoulder or perhaps he had the wind knocked out of him. Dr. Timperman and Marv Pollan both walked back with him, walked all the way across the field, and Bob seemed to be all right. That penalty against Cincinnati for holding on that uh, pass from Kenny Anderson to Bob Trumpy, which nullified the play and moves the ball back to the Green Bay 47-yard line, was penalty number six assessed against Cincinnati this afternoon. Six penalties for a total of 50 yards, and all six of them have come at a very, very crucial time. Jim Corbett has replaced Trumpy at tight end. Bengals now have a first and 20. The ball back at the Packer 47. Brooks and Curtis split on opposite sides. Anderson goes back to throw. Fires it out on the flat over the head of Booby Clark on the far side of the field. Trying to swing it out to the left side. He was covered well over there by Fred Carr, the right side linebacker, who had drifted out. And so had Bob Barber, the end over on that side. So it comes back to the 47, and it'll be second and 20. Nine and a half minutes left to play here in the third quarter. The clock has stopped. It's a 7-7 ball game. Both teams scored late in that second period after battling for about 26, 27 minutes without anybody putting anything on the board. Off the slot formation to the left was Corbett in the slot. Both wide receivers up on the line of scrimmage, scrimmage, and Corbett goes in motion. Anderson back to throw. Springs it out. Catches that screen down to the 40, to the 45, 35-yard line and out of bounds. On the far side of the field goes Elliott. That's that halfback screen. They have to wait for the two linemen, the center and the guard on that side to pull out and set up the block on the linebacker and the cornerback. Then Elliott slipped inside, and finally Luke ran him out of bounds. The Bengals get about 12 in the play as he was pushed out of bounds at the 35. So it'll bring up a third down now and eight. Those two safeties for Green Bay, Steve Luke, the uh, third-year man out of Ohio State, and Johnny Gray, the third-year man out of Cal State Fullerton, they refer to them as the Hit Brothers. So a big third down play for the Bengals. Eight to go at the Packer 35. 
Brooks and Curtis going opposite sides of the field. The cornerback on the right side, Mike McCoy, comes right up to the line of scrimmage with Curtis. Corbett goes in motion, back to throw. Goes Anderson, fires down the middle, incomplete, down at the 20-yard line. Curtis was coming across, and a flag is thrown back in front of where Anderson threw the ball. Roughing the passer is going to be called against the Green Bay Packers. A late hit on somebody, and with hands on hips, walking dejectedly upfield is Ezra Johnson, a rookie. And it may have been assessed against him. So that will give the Bengals an automatic first down, get a break in the penalty department this time. And a walk-off will take the ball from the 35-yard line, the line of scrimmage, all the way down to the 20. See if we can catch the number. <laughs> Couldn't catch it. Uh, yeah, we're, we're windowed in here, so we can't uh, pick up that PA outside. But it's down at the 20-yard line, and the Bengals have a first down at that point. Philadelphia has a 21-7 lead over the New York Giants. That game apparently is at halftime. Curtis near side. Brooks split to the far side. Now Brooks comes in motion. Anderson hands the ball off. Wide around to the right side comes Ellie. Gets the block. Gets to the 15 along the sidelines. To the 10 to the 5 and out of bounds perhaps at the 2-yard line. Elliott getting up a couple of good blocks along the way as he just picked his way behind his blockers coming down the right side. And McCoy and Gray finally ran him out of bounds at about the two, and it'll be first and goal. Bengals in the last two minutes of the first half, and uh, they have taken this opening kickoff and controlled the ball for almost six minutes now here in the third quarter, have finally rounded into the kind of Cincinnati football team that we saw during that 5-1 and one record in preseason. Bob Trumpy is back in at tight end for the Bengals, just shaken up momentarily. It was his shoulder or arm or perhaps... Both arms, but Trumpy's all right. First and goal at the two. And off into the line, diving into the end zone for the touchdown goes Tony Davis, and he spikes that ball. Tony Davis diving through that right side, landed a couple of yards deep in the end zone, and the Bengals go out in front now by a score of 13 to 7. So the Bengals put together a good, concerted 75 yard drive after taking his second half kickoff. Tony Davis punched in from two yards out, and the Bengals go out in front now 13 to 7. I wonder if his mother's listening on top of that hill outside of Omaha today. I don't think we reach out to that hillside in the daytime. We have to wait till it gets darker. Marvin Cobb will hold. Chris Barr will attempt the extra point. The lines are down. The ball is placed. The kick is high and up into the stands, and it is good. So there's time out on the field. With the score now, Bengals 14 and the Packers 7. Here's a refreshing piece of news from Chevrolet. The new 78 Chevette two-door hatchback has 18 new standard features and the base manufacturer's suggested retail price that's $282 less than the 77 model would have cost with the same equipment. That bears repeating. 18 features more, $282 less. You get a larger 1.6 liter engine, white striped tires, wheel trim rings, floor mounted console, swing out rear windows, sports steering wheel, and a quality built Delco AM radio just to name a few. The new Chevy Chevette two-door hatchback. A lot more car for a lot less money. Here's more. Chevrolet is also introducing an all-new Chevette four-door hatchback with more rear seat legroom than the 1977 four-door models of Toyota Corolla, Datsun B210, even the Honda Civic Wagon. The 78 Chevette, now at Chevy showrooms everywhere. Here at County Stadium in Milwaukee, nine minutes and nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Bengals have taken a 14-7 lead. That Buffalo and New York Jets game is final, but the scoreboard is partially blocked by the stands to our right, and it's difficult to see. So we'll have to wait until we get that score, and we'll pass it on to you. But the Jets won the ball game. There's Bars kick to Odom. It's high, and it's very deep, way back into the end zone, about five yards, and Odom's going to try and come out. He's going to get to the 10, runs into his own man, and then knock down at about the 18-yard line. Odom gathered that ball in about five yards deep in the end zone and came out with it. Jerry Anderson was the man who leveled him at about the 18-yard line. And Green Bay now has their hands on the ball for the first time here in the second half. They'll be starting out from their own 18. Bengals defensively with the same group, Bacon and Burley. Walter Johnson and Eddie Edwards up front. LeClaire, Harris, Williams. The defensive secondary the same. They send Odom out wide to the right and split the backs. Hand off and into the right side and getting very little as Barty Smith just tried to move in over the right side. An off-tackle power play and Eddie Edwards was right there to stop it. 
And uh, give Smith a couple of yards on the play. They put the ball out to the 20-yard line. It'll be second and eight. Bengals lead it 14-7 to seven now. 8.40 left to play in his third quarter. I would assume that's the halftime score now. Minnesota over Detroit 14 to nothing, although it might be in the second period. Odom comes to the left this time. And the backs, Smith and Harrell line up in an eye. It's Harrell running wide around the right side. He's running into trouble, and Jim LeClaire hauls him down at about the 21-yard line. Harrell trying to sweep wide to the right. Had to avoid a tackler at about the 18. As he cut in up at the 21, LeClaire nailed him for a gain of just one yard in the play. And now it'll become third and seven. Again this afternoon, Jim LeClaire, the 6'3", 237-pound veteran out of North Dakota, a six-year man, has been all over that field. He takes charge of that defense in that middle linebacking position and has really developed into one of the top middle linebackers in the NFL. Well, Ron Carpenter was scheduled to be released from the hospital this afternoon after that disc operation in his back, and Ron coming along well. Dickey going back to throw, fires a swing pass out to the right. At the 25, the man oh, at the 21-yard line will be dropped. Barty Smith, coming out of the backfield, ran into all kinds of problems on the far side of the field. Eddie Edwards had smelled it out and was over there to knock him down at the 22, and so the Packers will have to punt it away. And the Bengals could come out with pretty decent field position. So David Beverly back to do the booting for the Packers. In the first half of the game, the punting was not anything to write home about by either team. Beverly punted once for 35, and McAnally had a 35 and a half yard average and a couple. But Beverly with an average over 44 and a half coming into this game. There's a snap back. A big rush is on. Very, very short kick high into the air. It'll land at about the Packers 43 and go out of bounds right there. A big rush by Scott Perry. And Beverly punted that ball right straight up in the air, and the Bengals will come out with excellent field position. So there's time out on the field with a score Bengals 14, Packers 7. Over the last 25 years, computers have transcended from science fiction conjecture to reality. It's truly amazing the advances that have been made in computer technology. Solutions to business problems by computer systems have increased productivity in sales, manufacturing, distribution, and accounting. Interactive Information Systems, more commonly known as IIS, is a computer systems company that has developed people-oriented packages, giving companies and corporations throughout America that competitive edge. IIS offers innovative systems in database management, inventory management, and material requirements planning. For computer solutions for your business, call IIS. In Central Ohio, call 224-0380. Interactive Information Systems, 370 South 5th Street, Columbus. I-I-S. That 23-yard punt by the Packers' David Beverly gives the Bengals excellent field position. With 6 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and the Bengals holding on to a 14-7 lead, Cincinnati will put the ball in play first and 10 at the Green Bay 44-yard line. The final round, New England blank to Seattle Seahawks, 31-0. Bengals up at the line of scrimmage at the Packer 44. Curtis tight right, Billy Brooks split out wide to the left. Hand off, Booby Clark running wide around the right side. Booby cuts in and powers his way ahead for four yards, down to about the 40-yard line. Mike Butler, the big rookie, had to hold him, along with Jim Carter, Willie Buchanan, the cornerback on that side, also up to Aiden to stop. He'll put the ball just a little bit shy of the 40-yard line, but for statistical purposes, that's where it is. And the Bengals now have a second and six. Bengals are due back at Greater Cincinnati Airport tonight, shortly after 7.30 on their United Airlines charter jet. Final now, the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Giants 28-10. to 10. Slot formation left. Trumpy is split out wide to the right. A quick pitch. Trumpy gets the cutback block at Elliott, running wide right and gets to the 35. And that will be very close to what's needed for the first down. Carter and Weaver, the two linebackers, over there to make the stop. Trumpy went in motion toward the line of the scrimmage from his wide split on the right side. Cut back to get a block on the cornerback. And he powers the ball down at the 35-yard line, where it'll be a five-yard gain and will result in a third and one. Now Tony Davis and Pete Johnson are back in the backfield for the Bengals. Short yardage, third and one. Packers put seven men right up on the line of scrimmage. Long count handoff goes to Pete Johnson. He's got the first down. Plunging in over the right side. Moves the ball down to perhaps the 33-yard line. The middle of the line, Roller and Purifoy. And help from a couple others there to bring it to a quick halt. But Pete Johnson did his job, picked up the first down, and the Bengals have it at the pack 33. Bengals leading 14-7. to Scoring in the final 
30 seconds of that first half to tie it up. And then coming out for the second half with a 75-yard drive after taking the opening kickoff to go out in front 14-7. to Very methodical drive, 15 plays, and they used up uh, almost six minutes. 5.07, time left in this third quarter. Slot formation left. Curtis wide. Hand off in over the left side goes Pete Johnson. There isn't much there. He gets maybe a yard, and that's about all. Brother Linville Elliott back in the ball game. Ezra Johnson, the other rookie, in at the right-hand spot in place of second-year man Bob Barber made the stop. So there was no gain on the play by Elliott, and at the 33, it becomes second and 10. Clock running down to 442 left in this third period. Final out, Oakland beat the Browns 26 to 10. The Browns got a late touchdown in the ball game. Wide men on both sides. Curtis, far side, Billy Brooks on the near side. Packers come across and flags go down. Anderson back to throw. Fires it down. Brooks catches it on the 18 on a quick slant and goes down there. But flags were down. The Packers had jumped offside. If they were not pulled offside, the Bengals, of course, will take the play. Billy Brooks running a deep slant or perhaps a post, whatever you want to call it. Went up high to grab the ball and went down. And Buchanan put him down right at the 18. Great reception that time by Billy Brooks. He had to make a diving stab for it. And that's one of the questions that fans have been asking this week. Why not throw more to Billy Brooks, a first-round draft choice a year ago? Coming into this ball game, he'd had only five receptions for 53 yards. So now Glenn Bujnok checks in. John Shinners goes out as the Bengals continue to messenger through their left guard. The offside penalty declined by the Bengals. Now take the ball down at the Packer 18. Brooks now has three receptions this afternoon for 31 yards. Brooks goes out to the left. Curtis comes to the right. Curtis caught an eight-yard touchdown pass. Those final few seconds of the first half to get the Bengals into a tie. Booby Clark and Elliott are the running backs. Wide split behind Anderson. Anderson to clock up the middle. Hold is there. Booby gets down to the 15, tries to swing out to the left, and is going to be dropped right about at the 15-yard line by Steve Luke, the strong safety. Good, hard, punishing tackler. Clark makes three on the play to the 15, and it'll be second and seven. Here in this third quarter now, the Bengals have had the ball for 21 plays. The Packers have run only three plays and then were forced to punt. And that was that 23-yard punt by David Beverly that set the Bengals up in excellent field position at the Packers 44. Now a double wing formation with Clark, the only back in behind Anderson. Out of the double wing to the left is Linville Elliott. Quarterbacks come up the line of scrimmage as Anderson goes back to throw. Fires down in the corner. It's intercepted and out of bounds at the three-yard line by Steve Luke. It was intended down in the corner for Billy Brooks, and Luke stepped in front of the ball and intercepted it, and fortunately for the Bengals, he ran out of bounds. His momentum carried him out because there was nobody along that near sideline. And Anderson intercepted for the first time today, and now there's time out on the field with the score, Bengals 14, Packers 7. Cincinnati's great brewing tradition. Beautiful Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. That pass interception by Steve Luke, the strong safety for the Green Bay Packers, six foot two, two hundred pounder, third year man out of Ohio State. Played for Woody Hayes, was drafted fourth in nineteen seventy five. When he was at Ohio State, he played both corner, back, and center. Last year for the Packers, he started twelve games, and he's in there again as that starting strong safety. That's only the second pass the Packers have intercepted this season, and Luke has them both. So the Packers start out deep at their own three-yard line. They have Willard Harrell and Barty Smith as the running backs. They come out in the eye. Hand off goes to the second man, Harrell. He wiggles his way out to about the five-yard line as he's slanted in off right tackle. Dragged down over there by Walter Johnson along with Burley. Eddie Edwards also into the stop. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network. This is the voice of the Cincinnati Bengals in Central Ohio. WMNI. 
Follow the football action of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish Saturday afternoons here on your sports leader, WMNI in Columbus. Packers up at the line of scrimmage. This time the handoff to the second man, Barty Smith, and he plunges out to the 10 and gets out to the 12-yard line as he comes to the left side. Before he can be dragged down by Walter Johnson, good blocking on the left side of the Packer line by big Mark Conkar, the second-year man from Colorado, and Steve Knutson. And they're just about a yard short of a first down out at the 12, and it'll be third and one. Nothing fancy about that play at all, just sheer power in off left tackle. 2.38, the time remaining here in the third period. Bengals lead the Packers 14-7. to Bengals looking for the stopper right here again to force the Packers to punt from deep in their own territory. Smith and Harold are running backs. It goes to Harold in off the right side, and he gets to the 15-yard line and has the first down. Little Willard Harold slanted in off right tackle, got the first down as he moved it out over the 15-yard line, in fact, to about the 16. Very slow to unpile. There's a big pile of Packers and Bengals right about at the point of attack. So it's first and 10, and Green Bay is out of that desperate hole they were in back at the three-yard line. Clock running, we're down to just 2.05 left in the third period. Shadows beginning to settle in over Milwaukee County Stadium. At the end of the field where we're playing now, the remainder of the field is still bathed in sunshine. One wide receiver to the right. Everybody else is tight. This time it's Willard Harrell around the right side, and he crawls forward for about a yard as he tried to dive in over a pack. Jim LeClaire got a hand on him as LeClaire shot in the gap. Bo Harris, the left side linebacker, was down at the bottom of the pack, and he kind of had to ball it over that, and then he was pinned down for good at about the 17. So give Harrell one, and it will be second and nine. Much of the rushing yardage that the Packers have picked up this afternoon has been from the vaulting type of run that was just as, as, uh, exhibited there by Harrell. Harrell, Torkelson, Smith, all of them, a lot of times have found those holes closed up and have had to vault over a pile of bodies to pick up yardage. Now they split both the wide men, Payne and him out. The handoff goes to Harrell. He gets in over the right side and managed to wiggle his way out to about the 20-yard line. That's all. Gary Burley, the left end, nailed him. And at the 20 now, the Packers will look at a third and six. Dickey was six out of 11 in the first half of this ball game. So now Randy Mataha checks in to replace Bert Askerton. They swing Odom out to the left. They ring Vataha out to the right. Curry's goes up on the line of scrimmage. Roddy plays back. Dickey goes back to throw. Looks, fires out the right flat. It's caught by Harrell. Gets away from one man at the 25. Comes up to the 30. And dragged down from behind at the 40 by Gary Burley. Swung it out in the right flat. Vataha got a good block. Harrell took it out over there. And then Lamar Parrish was kind of helpless over there as the blocker was coming over to help out. And Burley had to run him down from behind and finally hauled him down at the 41 after the play picked up 21. And Green Bay is really out of the hole now and moving at their own 41. That'll be the last play of the third quarter as we're down in the final five seconds now. And we'll change ends of the field before anything more is done offensively or defensively. The gun sounds at the end of the third quarter. Well, the score, Bengals 14 and the Packers 7. When you have a family, you just can't do it alone. Baby, you Partnerships show up almost everywhere, even in darkest Africa, where Stanley met Livingston. Robinson Crusoe had a working partnership with his man Friday while shipwrecked. Disaster can make you wish you had a partner. Your Grange agent wants to be your partner in protection before disaster strikes. You can sleep nice when you know that your Grange partner has you covered. Grange rates are reasonable and claim service is fast when you need it. Listen, when your Grange agent suggests, let's be partners. Hi, this is the music. You're listening to the voice of the Cincinnati Bengals in Central Ohio, WMNI, where you'll hear the best in country music. We are your good neighbor. WMNI in Columbus. County Stadium, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Cincinnati Bengals lead the Green Bay Packers 14 to 7. We're starting the fourth and final quarter. The Packers ball first and 10 at their own 41 yard line. On the scoreboard, Minnesota leading Detroit 14 to nothing. Second quarter, San Diego leading New Orleans 7 to nothing in the second. 
Philadelphia defeated the New York Giants by a score of 28 to 10. The Oakland Raiders uh, picked up their 17th straight victory. The record is 18, held by Chicago twice in Miami. Oakland won their 17th in a row this afternoon, beating Cleveland 26 to 10. Pittsburgh leads Houston uh, 10 to 7. That is in the third quarter now. And New England defeated Seattle 31 to nothing. They have rookie Nate Simpson from Tennessee State in the running back spot now, along with Barty Smith. Aston comes in. They have only Odom split wide to the left. Handoff is to Simpson. He circles wide around the left side, and he gets away from one man. He'll get up to 45 and knocked out of bounds about there by Marvin Cobb. Managed to elude Reggie Williams back at about the 40. Got out wide. Cobb came up to knock him down. So Simpson carries wide left on his first foray into the lineup here this afternoon. And the Packers at the 45 will now be looking at a second and six. Bengals lead at 14 to 7 as we enter this fourth and final quarter of play. The 4 o'clock games are all getting underway. Atlanta and San Francisco, Dallas and St. Louis, and the Kansas City and Denver. We have nothing on the Washington-Tampa Bay game. That is not up on the board. And the Bears and Rams, of course, play tomorrow night. An eye formation now with Simpson, the deep man, Barty Smith up short. The pitch back to Simpson. Comes running wide to the right. There isn't much of any place to go, but he makes about five yards still on his feet and gets into the Bengal territory. It'll be hauled down at about the 47. Reggie Williams finally had to put the stopper on him when it looked as though he might be stopped back at about the 45-yard line. And the Bengals have been guilty of some sloppy tackling this afternoon right from the first offensive series that the Packers had. The tackling has not been crisp and sharp at all. So it's a first down for Green Bay at the Packer, or at the Bengal, 47-yard line. So Simpson in the lineup, carries twice, picks up the necessary yardage for the first down. Again, they line up in an eye formation. Odom is split left. Handoff goes to the short man, this time Barty Smith, and he's nailed by Burley right at the line of scrimmage. Burley just sliced in from that left-end spot and nailed Barty Smith right at the line of scrimmage. The ball right at the 47 where the Packers will have a second and ten. Just under 14 minutes remaining in this game. A week from tomorrow night, the Bengals and the Steelers, the first meeting of the year over at Three Rivers in Pittsburgh. Packers up to this point have gained 199 yards on the afternoon. The Bengals, 217. Houston has tied up Pittsburgh in the third period at ten. Askson to the right, Odom to the left. Dickey goes straight back to throw. Blitz is on. He fired it out of the flat, and Simpson is going to be hit out there and dragged down by Ken Riley back at the Packer 46. The blitz was on. Reggie Williams, I think it was, was coming, and he had to dump that ball off in a hurry. And Ken Riley came up in the quarterback spot on the right to dunk him for a loss of about six from the Bengals 47 back to the Packers 47. And now it becomes third and 16. A couple of new players check into the Packer backfield. Randy Bacaha is one of them. Askson goes out. Payne and Bataha are the two wide receivers. They come out to the right. They split their tight end out to the left. Their double wing and back to throw goes Dickey. Looks, fires the ball down the middle. It's dropped at the 45-yard line. Reaching high was Bataha. The ball actually was a little bit behind him. Reached as high as he could. Had the ball on his fingertips momentarily, and then it got away. So David Beverly will come in to boot. And the Bengals will get their hands on the football once again here with 12.47 left to play in the game. Well, the Houston Oilers are giving the Pittsburgh Steelers, at least up to this time, a very, very surprisingly tough ball game. Houston has 17 rookies on that ball club, and most of them are on offense. The line of scrimmage is the 46. The snap back to Beverly gets the punt away. A lazy high punt that Willie Shelby will take at the 10. Tries to get around to the right, and Canton is dropped by one of these two wide men downfield. Andre Thompson got him back at about the 8. So this time out of the field, score Bengals 14, Packers 7. The winter of 77 was rough, and it was mean, and it was cold. And it took more fuel oil to keep everything going than anybody believed possible. And it took more heart. Longer hours, shorter nights, and emergencies are the way of life. If there was ever a time when getting together would do it better, the winter of 77 was it. There are heroes you'll never hear about, stories that'll never be told. But probably the best story about the winter of 77 is what couldn't happen. And all the people who didn't run out of oil to their marathon fuel oil leaders got there in time. When he got there, it was doing it better. It's the only way he knows. We 
we got together to do it better. And we did it. Green Bay's David Beverly, who punted once the first half for a 35-yard average, that one punt going 35, got one away here when he needed it. This last one, 44 yards. And the Bengals, uh, because of the change in field position at the end of the quarter, are now starting out almost exactly where the Packers started out when they got the ball with 3.38 to go in the third quarter. They started first and 10 at the three-yard line. The Bengals are five yards farther upfield. They have it first and 10 at their own eight-yard line, 12 minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the ball game. And the Bengals lead it by a score of 14 to 7. Bengals will be home two weeks from this afternoon to take on the Denver Broncos. The Broncos going for their fourth consecutive win against Kansas City this afternoon. And that Denver Bronco game with the Bengals is sandwiched right in between Denver's two games with the Oakland Raiders. Booby Clark and Elliott, the running backs. Bengals come out with a slot formation to the left. Now Elliott goes in motion off to the right side. The handoff goes to Clark. He goes wide right, cuts in. Booby gets out to the 10 and is hit hard at about the 11-yard line. He'll be swarmed down by three or four Packers there, led by Carter. They went to the same side that Lenville Elliott was put in motion. Got the ball out to the 12-yard line, make it, so give him four. And the Bengals now have a second and six. Both the home bench and the visiting bench here at County Stadium is on the far side of the field, and both coaches are at a disadvantage now because where they're playing, the coaches are looking directly into that setting sun. Curtis comes to the left. Bill Brooks comes to the right. Curtis has caught just one pass this afternoon. That was for the touchdown. And a handoff. Elliott seeking his way through the line, breaks out over the 15, gets out to about the 17-yard line, and Clarence Williams in at the left-end spot in place of Mike Butler got him, or he might have romped off a pretty long way because there was open field in front of him. And now Pete Johnson and Tony Davis check in on the third and one situation at the 17. This has been the Bengals' operation this afternoon. Elliott and Clark have been the regular backs, and then when they go to the short yardage situation, third and one or third and two or second down, or what the case may be, why Pete Johnson and Tony Davis have gone into the game. Packers bunch them in tight. They have seven men right up on the line of scrimmage. Bengals' offensive formation is tight. as Pete Johnson into the middle. Pete wiggles his way out to perhaps around the 18-yard line, just about what he needed for the first down. Ezra Johnson and a host of others, and just all depends now on where they're going to spot that football. They're still unpotting them down there, and you can't see what's what yet. But Elliott and Davis are coming back onto the field, so they think it was the first down. But now we finally get the way cleared, and we can't see the ball because of the Green Bay Packer players standing around. And it's close enough they're going to bring in the chains to measure. 11-13 is the time remaining here in the ball game, and the Bengals have a 14-7 lead over the Packers. It looks like it's just about a half a yard ahead of that stake. It just did, just over the stake. Pete Johnson just picked up the yardage he needed. Now the Bengals hold onto the ball here at their own 18-yard line and have the first down as they've moved it out from the eight. Clock shows 11-13 left to play. Bengals lead it 14-7, to tying the game up late in the first half, then taking the opening kickoff of the third quarter, moving 75 yards to score. Park and Elliott back in the backfield. Tight left, Brooks split to the right side. And off in over right tackle goes Booby Clark, and he's got a couple of yards. He crosses the 20, gets out to about the 22 before he's hurled back by Carter and Weaver. So Booby will get about three in the play, perhaps four. John Shinners checks in with the play as Glenn Bouchnock checks out. Shinners had that dislocated toe suffered a couple of weeks ago, and this is the first time that he has seen action since that toe problem. They put it down at the 22, and that will make it second and six. Curtis and Brooks come in a slot formation out of the left. Curtis the wide man. McCoy about eight yards off that line of scrimmage. Hand off. Booby Clark running to the outside. Booby gets to the 25 going right. Crosses to about the 26-yard line. Made about four more yards on that play. A straight slant to the right. Barber, the second-year defensive end from Grambling, made the stop. And at the 26-yard line out, it'll be third and two. And again, Davis and Pete Johnson check back into the Bengal backfield. I guess you can say it was almost by accident that he discovered Darcy Griffin's cracked rib this week. He went to the doctor to have a, an injured toe x-ray. That was all right, but it was then they found the cracked rib. Now the Packers bunch in tightly in the third and two situation. It's just a matter of strength against strength. Running to the outside, Tony Davis, the flag is down, and he's knocked down for a loss on the play, but a flag was thrown. And let's get the call. It's holding the preliminary call against the Bengals. The Packers will probably refuse it because the Bengals will have to punt the football away. Davis was knocked down for a loss of about a yard as he attempted to swing out to his right. And the Packers 
are changing units, so they'll decline the penalty and they'll take over the football. Or rather, the Bengals will be forced to punt it from their own 25. So little Willard Harrell drops back along with Johnny Gray in twin safeties for the Packers. And Pat McAnally, who has not got off any good McAnally boomers this afternoon, will try to leg them down the field. The Packers safety men don't show much respect. They're only about 35 yards downfield. Harold, the deepest man. In fact, less than that, he's only about 32. Now he's going to back up. He had his, gets his sights readjusted a little bit, move back about three yards. Lines are down, waiting for the snap, and there it is. McAnally gets the boot away, and it's right to Harold at the 40. Now he tries to go wide around. Scott Perry gets him, drags him down back at about the 37. Scott Perry, one of the wide men. And that certainly was not much of a boot that time by McAnally. It only covered about 34 yards. And there's time out on the field with the score, Bengals 14, Packers 7. Some people wonder, why spend money on replacement windows when they already have good windows in their home? Well, maybe some of these new size customer letters will help you understand why. Dear Mr. Johnson, I wondered about spending money on new size windows, but my reservations are now gone. My wife thinks they're beautiful and very easy to clean. But the amazing thing is that they keep the thermostat on 65 degrees all winter long, and our furnace only comes on four or five times a day instead of 10 or 15 times in the past. Thank you. Our new size windows are paying for themselves. While well, fuel savings are important to you this winter, give Bill Johnson a call at 267-8396. New Sash is the only window with a good housekeeping seal of approval, and New Sash replacement windows are custom made for a perfect fit. Call Bill Johnson at 267-8396 and let him show you how to save up to 30% or more in heating costs. That 24-hour number again, 267-8396. Always ask for the original New Sash. We'll put the ball in play first and ten of their own 37-yard line. Quarterback Lynn Dickey will have running backs Willard Harrell and Barty Smith in behind him. His wide receivers are Steve Odom, the five foot eight inch mighty mite from Utah, 174 pounder, and Ken Payne, the four year veteran out of Langston. Odom is the guy who ran back a punt about 90 yards here a few years ago when the Bengals were up here for a preseason game. They send him out to the left. The Packers ready to go at their own 37. Lynn Dickey fakes, goes back on play action to throw. Now he's forced out of the pocket, runs off to the right, looking still, now fires at a mile down the field, and it is incomplete over the head of everybody who jumped for it down at the 15-yard line. Bert Askson was the intended receiver, and Riley and Ferris were back there, and I really think Dickey just threw it away because he saw that he was well covered. He was flushed out of the pocket and had to drift off to his left. And then Coy Bacon could not get around the blocker to get over to him. Dickey just planted himself and let it go. So it comes all the way back to the 37, where it'll be second and 10. That took nine seconds off the clock. Clock is stopped now with nine minutes and 20 seconds to go. Dickey nine for 16 on the afternoon. He threw the 14-yard touchdown pass to Barty Smith. They put wide receivers on both sides, Smith and Harrell. In behind Dickey, second and ten, Packers at their own 37. A straight drop back this time by Dickey. Looks, flips it over the middle. It's caught by McGeorge, the tight end, and he's dropped at about the 42. A little pass off to the left to Rich McGeorge, the tight end, who is drifting off into that flat. And Reggie Williams got over there to collar him at about the 43. So they got about six yards on the play, and the Packers now will have a third and four. Down to 8.58 remaining to be played in the game. The Bengals have a 14-7 lead over Green Bay. A week from tomorrow night, the Bengals and Steelers over at Three Rivers. Two weeks from this afternoon, the Bengals and Denver Broncos at Riverfront Stadium. No report this afternoon on the Kansas City-Denver uh, game. That's being played at Mile High Stadium in Denver, and that one just got underway about 20 minutes ago. Payne and Odom split on opposite sides. Dickey juggles the snap, but goes back to throw, and he lobs it out of the flat, and it's incomplete. And tenor for Barty Smith, right over there with him was Bo Harris, and they arrived at about the same time, and the pass was incomplete, so the Packers will have to punt it away. So the clock is stopped, 8.30 left, and David Beverly will go in to boot it away to Willie Shelby. The Bengals were going to have Lamar Parrish return punts, but when Parrish returned only his second one this year, he came up with a case of bruised ribs, and that ended that. And Parrish has not been back there since. There's a snap back to Beverly. Again, a big rush is on. He gets a good high spiral away. Willie Shelby drifts over the right and then lets the ball go, and it bounces out of bounds down at about the Bengals' 18-yard line. So the Bengals will put it in play there. There's a timeout on the field. Score remains Bengals 14, Packers 7.
This year, your Chevy dealer has more good news about more new Chevrolets than you've seen in years. The new third generation Monte Carlo, the new size Chevy Malibu, the new size Malibu wagon, the new four door Chevy Chevette hatchback. These plus the new Chevrolet Caprice, new Chevy Montas, a new Camaro, even a new silver anniversary Corvette. So come on in, America, and see what's new. Couple of updates on the scoreboard now in the third quarter the Houston Oilers have Pittsburgh by a score of 17 to 10 in the first period the St. Louis Cardinals lead Dallas 3 to nothing Bengals have it first and 10 at their own 18 yard line 8.23 to go in the ball game Bengals lead the Packers 14 to 7 Clark and Elliott the running backs has been a good bruising defensive struggle here and off around the outside goes Elliott. There isn't much of any place to go, and he's going to wind up losing about three or four as he's really corralled by a couple of Packers on the far side of the field. One Willie Buchanan, the cornerback over on that side. There just wasn't any place to go, and that one will cost the Bengals about three yards. Back to the 17-yard line. It'll be second and 13. Clock running. We're down to eight minutes remaining to be played in this game. Chester Marco has missed one field goal for the Packers. The Bengals have not attempted a field goal this afternoon. Packers scored first. The Bengals tied it up in the final 30 seconds of the first half. Brooks to the far side. Curtis to the near side. Again, the cornerback's about eight yards off that line of scrimmage. As Anderson on play action goes back to throw. Fires it down the middle. Trump, he catches it and goes down at the 39. Trumpy caught that ball right straight down the middle. And as he was hit, now Trumpy is down on the field at the 39. I believe he may have gotten it in the back as he turned around. Trumpy was facing around toward his left and then had to turn around and was rolling down looking toward his right as he came up with the ball. Johnny Gray came up to put him down, and he may have gotten a knee into Trumpy because Trumpy is uh, requiring some attention down there at the 40-yard line. Marv Collins, the trainer, and Dr. Timberman are both out on the field with, uh, with Trumpy. He's back up on his feet now. So the Bengals find that middle open, and Kenny Anderson hits Trumpy. That's the second time that Trumpy has been shaken up this afternoon. Bob Trumpy, of course, and Bob Johnson are the only original Bengals remaining, both in season number 10. And Trumpy has talked about the possibility before that this might be his final year of professional football. But that we shall find out sometime during the offseason, probably. Bengals have first and 10 now at their own 40. The Cardinals have a 3 0 lead over Dallas. That's in the first period. Tight left, slot formation to the right. Bengals out at their own 40. Handoff goes to Clark, crunches his way into the left side and gets perhaps three yards. He was hit right about at the 40-yard line, but he shook off one tackler and then got out and looped along with Ezra Johnson, the rookie, who's been playing the end spot for the Packers much of the second half combined to make the stop. So Clark was held at three, and it'll be second and seven at the Bengals 43. Bengals lead it 14 to seven. Curtis comes to the near side. Bill Brooks goes to the far side. All teams this year have had their cornerbacks off about eight yards on the line of scrimmage the way the Packers have played all afternoon. The blitz is on as Anderson goes back to throw. He's got a quick out on the far side. Billy Brooks eludes one man down to the 40-yard line and all the way down to the 35. A good move on that deep out by Billy Brooks over in the far side of the field. The blitz was on. Two linebackers were coming. And then Brooks caught the pass, stepped away from the cornerback over on that side, and actually made about seven or eight more yards to the point where he caught the ball down to the Packer 35. So that play is good for 22 and a quick first down. Good move, as Phil said, by Billy Brooks. And you could almost see those wheels spinning as he took that pass, anticipating what that defender was going to do. And it was a one-on-one, head-on-head duel at that time. And who was going to outguess who? Kenny Anderson, 12 for 16 now for 167. And, of course, the one touchdown. Slot formation right. Hand off to Clark, the first man into the left side. And Booby fights his way forward for about three or four yards to the 31. Jim Corbett, the tight end, blocking on that side as they ran the strong side slant. Again, Ezra Johnson was the man who was in on the stop. This Packer defensive front four has been completely rebuilt this year. Mike McCoy, of course, held down that left tackle spot for a number of years. At one point early in the season, the Packers switched him over to offense. That didn't last long. Then brought him back to defense. 
and then finally shipped him off to the Oakland Raiders. So Mike Butler, the rookie, is taken over at one spot. Now Ezra Johnson and Bob Barber in there with Purifoy and Roller as the tackles. Corbett goes in motion out to the right, second and six. Bengals back, stumped out to Linville Alley to get the block, cuts inside, gets to the 30, down to the 25, to the 20, and will run out of bounds inside at about the 19. Forced out of bounds by Gray and McCoy. He had to wait until Bushnock and Bob Johnson could get over there for the freeing blocks on that halfback screen left, and then he cut inside and had the room then and got it down to the 19-yard line. So gain about uh, 12 yards on the play and another first down. It's great to watch the blocking develop on that halfback screen. You see Elliott come out there and take that pass, and you think to yourself immediately, he is in deep trouble. And all of a sudden, you see Booznock and Bob Johnson coming out there and setting up to take out the men they're supposed to, and Elliott finds the running room he needs. The Bengals right down near the shortstop position on the dirt. Hand off to Booby Clark in over the left side, and Booby clenches his way forward inside the 15, dragging a couple tackers with him, and gets it to the 14-yard line. The man who had him was Clarence Williams. And he got some more help before Booby dragged it ahead for about five yards to the 14-yard line, and it will be second and five. And with that, Glenn Buznak checks back into the lineup. He and John Shinners are the messenger guards this afternoon. Shinners, number 64, trots off the field. Buznak has come in with a play for Kenny Anderson. Clark unofficially has 17 carries for 86 yards this afternoon, and that's five a pop. Time remaining, 4.25. Bengals lead it 14-7. Threatening again. Billy Brooks goes in motion from left over to the far side of the field. Anderson with the ball drops back, sets it up. Brooks is open, but a flag is down to the 15. is tripped up to the 13. Burn Holland after a guy. That's uh, McCoy over there. He gave Holland a shove, and Holland took exception to it, came back and let one fly at him. And two teams quickly get over there to break it up. The flag was thrown right over near the point where the ball was caught. Holland was pulling out over there. He may have thrown a block at McCoy, or it may have been a clip. Let's see what it's going to be. Suki usually doesn't get rattled like that, but he kind of took exception to that shove. It was absolutely, absolutely useless by McCoy because they were away from the play, and the play was over. Then Holland let one right fly at him. They hurt his hand. <laughs> we'll, see what the, we'll see what the penalty call is. The Bengals are going backwards, so I would assume that it is going to be against them. Let's get the preliminary call. It's an illegal procedure against the Bengals. And Holland has gone off the field. I don't know if he has been ejected. Did not. No, he's still on the field. Officials still trying to uh, decide this one, just see what they want to do with the ball. We've got unsportsmanlike conduct against the Bengals. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Green Bay Packers. That's Hawaiian Holland. That will nullify the play. It will come back to the 14 yard line. And it will remain second and five. And many of the 53,653 in attendance uh, didn't like that call. They actually sold 54,687 tickets today. So that means there were 1,034 no-shows. The attendance, 53,653. Now the Packers are questioning the call, and now Bob Johnson comes over to uh, get into the thing, and McCoy's unhappy about it because he was called for the unsportsmanlike conduct, and a couple of his teammates drag him away, and none too gently. Because of his action in shoving Holland, and then Holland returning the favor by a couple of offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties were called. If that's the way they're finally going to resolve the thing, and that's the way it is, the ball will stay at the 14-yard line. It'll be second and five. Despite the fact that we're in pause with just a slight window open, you can hear the displeasure being vented by the Packers fans at the County Stadium. The ball will go back to the 14-yard line. On the near side comes Brooks. Curtis goes to the far side. Packers, of course, will have to play a man-to-man -man down here. Brooks goes wide right, and the safety follows him. Anderson drifts off to the right, fires down to the 10, and out of bounds goes Brooks after catching it there. Bill Brooks out on the right flat, took that pass, gained about four yards in the play, and it'll bring up a third and one. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network. WMNI in Columbus, Ohio. The time is 4.32. Bill Samp and Jimmy Crown back at Milwaukee County Stadium where Isaac Curtis goes out now. The Bengals go to two tight ends in the third and one situation down at the Packer 10. Pete Johnson and Tony Davis are back in there and both lines bunch tightly. Handoff goes to Pete and he has the first down, but a flag is thrown. Thrown in the backfield and let's go. Oh, it's going to be a holding call against the Bengals. Well, they have the first down at the eight and this one will be wiped out by the hole. That'll move the ball back to the 20-yard line, and now it'll become third and 11. 
So another costly penalty against the Bengals. Instead of having a first down and goal at the 8, they lined up with third and 11 back at the 20. See if we can catch the number. Number 36. Who, Lendell Elliott. That was Lendell Elliott. I didn't think he was in there. He wasn't. Is right. Maybe he said 46. Lendell Elliott was not in there. He's back in there now. So at the 20 now becomes third and 11. The Packers put their... Thought they were going with a couple of extra defensive backs. They might be because they've got four men up front. Curtis goes to the far side and Bill Brooks comes to their side. The Packers come across the line of scrimmage and flags go down. Anderson drops back, fires it down into the end zone. Curtis can't hold it as he's going out of bounds down at about the one. Well, that one will cost the Packers five yards. It'll put it back to the 15-yard line and we'll go through it all again. It'll be third and about six. Tom Hansen is in at the middle linebacking spot for Jim Carter. Carter injured here just a play or so ago. Schinner is very, very gentlemanly like. Picks up the official flag and hands it back to him as he walks over. You know, John Schinner lives right up here in Hartford, just outside Milwaukee. And his dad ordered 245 tickets he got for the game this afternoon. <laughs> John, of course, is in the publishing business with his father up here. That's about the whole town of Hartford. Brooks goes to the far side now, and Curtis comes to the near side. We're back at the 15, third and six. Four minutes left to play in this game. The double wing formation is Lendl Elliott comes out to the left on the wing. Anderson goes back to throw, has the time, looks, steps up, now is going to run, and he'll be dropped at the 19-yard line. Everybody covered downfield, nobody to throw it to. And Anderson just put his head down and got to the 19, and that will bring in Chris Barr for an apparent field goal attempt. All at the 19, it'll be about a 36-yard boot. It'll be Barr's first attempt of the afternoon. So another crucial holding penalty. Instead of a first and goal at the 8, the Bengals wind up now back at the 20. Penalty to the 15, and now will be forced to go for the field goal. The ball will be put down by Marvin Cobb at the 26. It'll be a 36-yard attempt by Barr, who is two out of four in the season. One for one between 20 and 29 yards, and one for two between 30 and 39. So the lines are down finally, we're getting set. The ball will be put on the grass. Down, the kick is up in the air, and it is no good. It's wide to the right. So both Mark Hall and Barr have missed from 36 yards down. The score stays 14 to 7. That was a mighty, mighty big field goal. There's a 3.37 left, of course, the touchdown would tie the game. So the Packers will take over. They'll have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Dallas to side up the Cardinals. They're at 3-3 in the first period now. Houston still holding that 17-10 lead over the Steelers in the third quarter. San Diego 7 to Orleans nothing. That was the halftime score. Minnesota ahead of Detroit 14 to nothing. That was also a halftime score. Open beat Cleveland 26-10. So the Packers send out Payne and Odom. Out wide to the left. The backs in an eye. On play action, Dickey back to throw, had to sidestep a rush, now fires upfield, intercepted by Bo Harris at the 30. Bo runs it back to the 25, Bulldogs his way down to the 20, and he'll be down right there. Bo Harris reached up high, grabbed that ball off his fingertips, and a couple of other players start jumping around, and one Bengal grabs a backer and throws him away. Then a backer throws a punch at him, and so they start shoving around on the far side of the field. But Bo Harris, with a big interception after Dickey had to step out of the pocket because of a big rush, was knocked off balance when he ran into one of his own running backs and then threw it straight up the right side and Bo Harris picked it off at the 30 and kind of ran those last five yards like a halfback just plowing along with a couple of Packers draped on him and the Bengals get their second interception of the afternoon they both been by linebackers Jim McClure picked one off in the first half and the Bengals have the ball right back knocking at the door at the Packer 20. Time remaining, 325. Bengals lead, 14-7. Clark and Elliott are the running backs. Curtis tight right. Bill Brooks split to the left. Hand off into the line. Clark comes out to the right side, cuts in, gets inside the 15, and plunges on down to about the 12. Jim Carter, back in the lineup, had a hold of him, first of all, and Johnny Gray finally had to put him down. As Booby Clark is now over 90 yards rushing this afternoon as he gets himself about eight there from the... 20-yard line down to close to the 12, and I think for statistical purposes, although those markers out on the field are scratched off, there we can see the nose of the ball. It is at the 12, so give Clark 8, and it'll be 2nd and 2. 
Time on the clock, 2.51 remaining. Wide receiver split to the right. The back split behind Anderson. It's Clark again, and Booby inside the 10 to the 9 as he tried it in the left side. Running on the side with Rufus Mays, along with Glenn Bouznock, and they're going to put the ball right down at the 10-yard line. Although it looked from here as though he made it to about the 9-yard line, and that may be close enough. They're going to... Might have to have it now. They're putting it back outside the 10-yard line. How can that be? That doesn't make sense at all. Clark, with the ball nestled in his arms, was inside the 10 at the 9, and now the ball is put about a foot outside the 10-yard line, so it'll be third and one. Well, it'll actually third and about eight inches. So Tony Davis and Pete Johnson are back in the backfield. The Bengals are letting the clock just run down to the two-minute warning here, and we're one second away, and there we are. So there's a timeout on the field with the score, Bengals 14, Packers 7. Discount this and discount that. Sales on this and sales on that. Why trek all over town to save a few pennies here and there when you can shop one automotive store with savings on everything in the store? That's right. Corvairs is the place for store-wide savings up to 75% on everything. Corvairs has a full selection of CBs, 23 and 40 channels at tremendous savings. Corvairs has winterizing products like snow tires, batteries, antifreeze, and jumper cables, all at rock-bottom prices. And Corvairs has a complete line of motor oil, filters, plugs, and tune-up parts. Corvairs has everything you'll need for your car or truck. So truck it over to Corvairs. Corvairs has the best selection, the best prices, and two locations to serve you. Corvairs, 2000 Corvair Avenue, just off Allen Creek Drive, and 3254 Cleveland Avenue, North Columbus. Look for Corvairs storewide savings in the Thursday's Dispatch, Saturday's Citizen's Journal, and the Sunday Dispatch. Once you shop Corvairs, you'll be back. Bill Samp and Jimmy Crum back at Milwaukee County Stadium, where the Bengals will have a third and just inches to go down at the Packers' 10-yard line. Baltimore has a 31-28 to lead over Miami now in the third quarter. Although that game should be just about over. It's in the fourth quarter, but that's the latest score that we have. The finals open beat Cleveland 26-10. New England blank Seattle 31 to nothing. Philadelphia beat the New York Giants 28-10. to Have nothing on Kansas City or Denver. Okay, third and short yardage, Johnson and Tony Davis. The Bengals running backs down at the Packer 10. Hand off to Pete, and he's got the first down, plunging in over the right side that time behind Lapham and Vern Holland. Got that ball down to about the 8 or 9, and the Bengals have the first down. And, of course, running off time on the clock. And the Packers are between the Devils and the Deep Blue Sea right now because if they call timeouts, they'll be wasting them. When they get them back on, get the ball back on offense, should the Bengals score, if they get the ball back. And if they don't call a timeout, the Bengals will take plenty of time, all the time they need, because... They have the 14-7 to lead and a minute 54 left, and somebody has called timeout right now that may have been Green Bay. Certainly the Bengals would not. It'll be Bengals' first and goal at the nine. Clock is stopped with 1.54 remaining to be played. Week from tomorrow night, the Bengals play the Cedars over at Three River Stadium. In two weeks from this afternoon, we'll be back at Riverfront for the first time in four weeks to take on the Denver Broncos. Right now, in the third quarter, Houston has a 17-10 to lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that game is a little behind time, too. The New York Jets beat Buffalo. We can't see the final. Looks like 24-19. So Clark and Elliott back in the running back's positions, and the Bengals come out with a slot right. Curtis Wyde and Billy Brooks in the slot. On count, the handoff goes to Elliott. Around the right side, gets away from a tackler, slips. We'll get back to just the line of scrimmage, and that's all. He got away from Dave Roller behind the line of scrimmage but then slipped in the process and just about got back to the line of scrimmage at the 9 or 10 yard line. May have lost a yard on the play, and again, I believe the Packers are going to call a timeout, stopping the clock with a minute and 42 seconds remaining. Bengals had a chance to put it away, but Chris Byer missed a 36-yard field goal. If the Bengals don't score, he'll have another opportunity right here to put it away, put it beyond the point where the Packers could reach it. It's 14-7 to right now. We brought you up to date on all the other scores. There haven't been any changes. The Bengals will have a second and goal at the 10. As you mentioned, the Bengals' plane is due back in Cincinnati about 7.30 tonight. Kenny Anderson over in the sidelines talking with the offensive coaches over there. A few of the people have left Milwaukee County Stadium, but not very many. Had a crowd of around 53,000 on hand this afternoon. The nose of the ball is right at the 10, where it'll be second and goal. The Packers again have called a timeout.
Coming into the games this afternoon, the other three teams in the division, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Houston, were 2-1, and one, and the Bengals were 1-2. and two. So back to action, up to the line of scrimmage, the Bengals with a second and goal. Clark and Elliott are the running backs, one wide receiver off to the right. Hand off into the right side, Clark down to the five, and the flag is thrown as he gets to the three-yard line, and I believe that the Bengals are going to be called for holding, and I think maybe it'll be John Shinners. So the penalties have been absolutely brutal coming at the wrong time this afternoon. And Booby Clark had made it all the way down to the four-yard line and would have just about hit the 100-yard mark in rushing if that play had not been nullified by the holding penalty. I don't know that it was against Shinners, but he was on the ground and very disgusted when the call was made. At the eighth penalty against the Cincinnati Bengals, that takes it back to the 20-yard line. It'll be second and goal. It runs some time off the clock, which is stopped with a minute and 38 seconds left to play. Clark on that play made about six yards, and that would have put him over the 100-yard mark for rushing, but it was wiped out by the hold. So now Curtis goes to the right, and Brooks comes to the left. Clark and Elliott with a wide split behind Anderson. Bengals with a second and goal. Anderson goes back to throw. Swings it out to the right. It's caught by Elliott. He's down. He gets away at the 15. Goes down to the 10 and gets all the way down to the 8 before Ezra Johnson can hit him from behind. He broke a tackle at about the 15. One man had him around the legs. And he got the ball all the way back down to about the 7-yard line or 8-yard line. And now flags go up in the air again. Belatedly, they're just thrown now. Let's see what this one's going to be. They're consulting with the Green Bay Packers, and the Bengals are backing up. They're still talking about it. It's going to be walked off against the Bengals for the minute 21. This one will take it back to the 22-yard line. Rufus Mays may have been called for a personal foul on that one. I don't know what. It is against Rufus Mays, but it's unsportsmanlike conduct. So a penalty wipes out another one. That's the Bengals' ninth penalty this afternoon, and that continues to be just a real bugaboo. It's not only the number, but it's when they occur that have been killing the Bengals' offense. Well, it'll remain second down, and we've been stuck on second down now for a long time, or third down. Yeah, the down had elapsed. And the call was against him after the whistle had blown. So it's third down, and the Bengals are back at their own 22. Anderson with a handoff, holding down to the 15-yard line, down to the 13-yard line, goes Lenville Elliott. That'll make the field goal situation just that much shorter, and in comes Chris Barr. Clock down to a minute 10. The Packers, I believe, have just one timeout remaining, and now they have called it to stop the clock with a minute and nine seconds remaining. Three timeouts have been called. The last two have been charged against the Packers. I'm not sure about the first one. So the ball is at the 14-yard line. It means Barr will try it from about 31 yards out. The Packers call a timeout to give him a little time to think about it. The ball will be put down in the dirt. Barr, just a short time ago, missed from 36 yards out. So the Bengals have been penalized nine times this afternoon. And they've just wiped out a first and goal situation down at the eight-yard line, and the Bengals have been able to get the ball back as far as just about the length of the football inside the 15, where this field goal attempt will come from. Bengals lead it 14 to 7 in a minute and nine seconds. The time remaining on the clock, and the Bengals could put the game away right here if Barr is successful on his field goal. He's made two out of five in the year now. So the official signals now that we're ready to go. It's going to be from 32 yards out. Marvin Cobb will put it down at the 22. Crowd streaming. There's the snap back. The kick is up in the air. It's away, and this one is good. So Chris Barr hits from 32 yards out, and that gives the Bengals a 10-point lead now with a minute and five seconds left to go. Chris Barr with a 32-yard field goal ups the count to 17 to 10. And this is just about the type of scoring game that the Packers and the Vikings and the Lions and Bears generally play in the Central Division. They don't generate a lot of offense, but they have pretty good defenses. So with a minute and five seconds left now, the Bengals will kick off, holding a 17-7 lead. 
Steve Odom will be the deep man when the Packers finally get things talked over and decide who they're going to put where as they're still huddled up and talking as Barr goes back into the shade at the 35-yard line to put the ball down and see if he'll boot it. Now we're going back to Andre Thompson is going back to be the deep man this time. Number 43, and he's flanked by a couple of men at about the 20-yard line. So Barr advances on the ball, and there's the kick. It's a knuckler that'll be lined to Thompson at the 5. Up to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Straight up the field at the 25, 30, 31-yard line. He's hit and knocked down. Scott Perry got up there to put the stop on him. Barr just lined that kickoff, so Thompson had a little room to run it back before he ran into anybody. The Packers now at their own 32. 59 seconds, the time showing on the clock, and I don't believe that the Packers have any timeouts remaining. Bengals in front, 17-7. to seven. Miami and Baltimore having a real scoring duel in the second half, 31-28 Baltimore. They have a slot formation to the right. Double wing, only one back. Dickey goes back to throw. Fires over the head of everybody and out of bounds up near the 45. Payne was the man to whom the pass was closest. Parrish and Harris were both over there. And Bo had shut him off from the front, so Dickey just threw it away. Stops the clock with 55 seconds left. Now it becomes second and 10 at the Packer 32. The Bengals going with a 3-4. They've got Glenn Cameron in there. So we've got the four linebackers, Burley and Bacon here at the ends. Eddie Edwards is the nose man right over center, and Glenn Cameron has become the fourth linebacker. Jim LeClaire will always line up on the strong side. He comes over this time to the left of the Packers' right. Slot formation right, wide receiver. It's on the left side, and Dickey again goes straight back to throw. Looks, Coy Bacon gets an arm around, and now he throws up field. It's caught by Vataha, and he's going to be chased down and slammed down right at the 35-yard line by Jim LeClaire. LeClaire picked up Randy Vataha, spun him around, banged him down. Now he goes over and pats him on the back, but it's at the 35. It's a gain of three, and the Packers now will have a third and seven. Coy Bacon got a hold of Dickey's shoulder and spun him around a little bit, but Dickey managed to escape from that grasp and then hit Vataha out to the right. So it stops the clock with 46 seconds, the time remaining. Dickey drifting off to his left, back to throw. Looks, fires upfield, incomplete, and almost intercepted by Riley up at midfield. The ball went through his hands as the receiver, Ken Payne, was overthrown. And that will bring up a fourth down, and the Packers have seven yards to go. And, of course, they won't boot the ball. It doesn't do any good at this stage of the game. They'll go for it. They trail 17-7. to So the Packers huddle up, they have the ball at their own 35. That incompleted pass stopped the clock with 41 seconds left. Payne goes out to the left with Bataha on the slot. They have three wide receivers. Odom comes to the right. Barty Smith is the only running back. And back to throw goes Dickey. Fires up the middle. McGeorge has it, and LeClaire knocks him down. He may have the first down out at about the 42. Mitch McGeorge came out of the backfield, caught that pass over the middle, does have the first down out at the 43. Now, the Packers will no huddle, of course, and the clock is down to 20 seconds remaining. Again, only Barty Smith in behind Dickey. Dickey goes back to throw. Cox's arm fires upfield incomplete at about the 45, a little short pass right over the middle to Barty Smith coming back. And that stops the clock now with 12 seconds left. We have no further score in the San Diego-New Orleans game or the Minnesota-Detroit game, although they're well into the second half. But the scores have not changed. In fact, the Baltimore-Miami game up on the board is far behind where it actually is. And still, Houston 17, Pittsburgh 10. The only thing that we have showing on that game in the third quarter. That game is almost over. Three wide receivers, two come to the right, one to the left. Packers with the first down at their own 43 and back to throw is Dickey. Cox's arm once, now looking, fires upfield, it's caught. By Payne at the 40, retreats to the 45, trying to get out of bounds, but won't. He'll be spun down at midfield. The clock keeps running, and that's it. Ball game is over, and the Bengals have defeated the Packers by a score of 17-7. to 7. 